It is settled then. Please excuse me, and enjoy your conversation at your leisure. Thank you for arranging everything for us, Malus. Excuse me, miss. Do you need anything from us? Mm. Oh. Hey, Navia's all quiet. This isn't like her at all. I'm sorry. That I only came to visit after all this time. <sighs> after what happened, I, I didn't know how I was supposed to face the two of you. Ah, if it's about that, there's no need to apologize. After my husband died, Spina di Rusula sent us a lot of Mora and support. I understood your guilt and apology to be genuine. But aren't all of those things nothing compared to the loss of Jacques? I can understand the kind of pain that comes with losing a father so needlessly. You don't understand at all. I didn't know how to face you, because I didn't know what I could possibly bring as a consolation gift. I know only the full truth could bring closure to you, and to all of us. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I appreciate the sentiment, but you don't have to carry all that guilt. On the matter regarding my husband, my daughter and I have more or less found our answer already. Would you mind sharing it with me? I really can't believe that my father could ever bring himself to shoot Jacques. I always knew that my husband's money was earned through others' suffering. He told me countless times that if he could turn back the clock, he would never go into the synth business again. He had many regrets and felt that he took the idea of providing for his family too literally. For the longest time, he thought Mora was everything. So when Mr. Callus came to him with a proposal, he accepted it almost immediately. He tried to be as careful as he could, but even so, he was still found out by the higher-ups. They found out about his betrayal? Papa didn't say that exactly. But Papa did tell me that I should never be ungrateful. Before he left that day, he told me that he had no choice. It was only later that I realized it was his final farewell to the two of us. I don't know that for sure, but you could say that's... The conclusion I eventually came to. Which is why I'm the one who should feel guilty. Callus had always taken great care of us, both when he was still. 
live and after he passed away. Even if he fired the shot that killed my husband, it was likely in self-defense. It is impossible for me to hate him for what he had done. But Mama, why is Papa still the bad guy if he did the right thing? Papa always wanted to be a good man, so why did he have to do a bad thing in the end? Well, things aren't always as they seem. You still feel like your Papa was a good man, right? Yeah, Papa was a really good man. The best in the whole world. Then you should hold on to that. If a good man had to do a bad thing, then he must have had his reasons. Regardless of whether he left you a parasol or a sword, he must have done so to give you a better life. Oh. Thank you for everything you've told me. I will definitely find the truth. The current state of things is not something I'm willing to just sit back and accept. Thank you. I'm very grateful to hear this from you. Even though your personality is quite different from your father's, your determination when you speak is really similar. You really think so? That's the first time anyone said that to me. I'm fine. Don't worry. Let's investigate the three suspects next. Florent should be nearby, and we should be able to find Thierry and Uncle Marcel in the city. I'll get myself together on the way, so please don't worry. Greetings, boss. How may I be of assistance today? I'm sure you've heard about what happened at the Opera House. Someone got turned into water right in front of us. Yeah, I've heard. With something that dramatic, I'm sure journalists will milk it for all it's worth. And it'll be all the talk for the next several weeks. It also reminded me, on the day that the incident happened with my father, it was raining outside, and we found some clothes left at the scene. After my partner here put the dots together for me, I feel like we should try to reopen his case. Can you do me a favor and try to recall what happened that night? Hmm, let me think. Mr. Callus was feeling pretty upbeat that day. So he was drinking and bantering away with us at the table. After that, he told us that he wanted to go get some fresh air. So we let him go without thinking much of it. Who knew that we would hear two gunshots ring out right after? My first reaction was that Mr. Callus's life was in danger. So I grabbed my holster and made a mad dash toward the scene. But when I got there, it was already too late. Mr. Callus was standing over a dead body with a gun in his hands. All we could do was look back and forth at each other, not knowing what to say. So you also remember two gunshots, then? Indeed. The guard said that the first shot didn't hit anyone, while the second killed Jacques. But I've never really bought that explanation. Reason being, Mr. Callus had left his gun on the table. I even made sure to confirm that before running to the scene. But according to the guards, that doesn't mean he couldn't have had other guns on his person. About the clothes left at the scene that you mentioned. Do you think there was a third person there who was turned into water? At least from our perspective, my father had no reason to kill. So he would also have no reason to bring an extra gun with him. The gun he was holding probably belonged to Jacques. 
or a third person on the scene. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So you're saying Mr. Callus ended up with the gun because he seized it from one of the other guys? But hold on. If that's what had happened, then why didn't he share the truth with any of us? He didn't even want to face the Oratrice machine, and chose instead to prove his honor in a duel. Did he lose all faith in the courts after seeing someone dissolve right in front of his eyes? Mm, about that, Malus told me a thing or two. So, I think I can understand why he committed to the duel. I'll tell you everything, once the whole truth has been revealed. I understand. Then, I'll leave Mr. Callus's honor in your hands, boss. And if I may just say one more thing. The whole Callus the Unfaithful epithet has been a thorn in my side since the day it was invented. Many people have laughed at me for still calling him Mr. Callus, even after so many years have passed. But it was Mr. Callus's trust that allowed me to rise through the ranks of Spina di Rosula and live the life I lead today. No matter what others might say, he'll always be the man I respect the most. And he'll always be my boss. Don't worry. I will definitely find the truth. You and all our other comrades at the Spina deserve to know the truth as well. Intel is just like futures. You gotta invest a lot before you can start earning. Water comes in many flavors to the discerning palate. Mondstadt's water is crisp and pure, while water from Liyue has an enduring aftertaste. In Inazuma, the water possesses a depth of flavor unlike any other. Sumeru's water, meanwhile, has a rich and complex flavor profile, but it must be savored patiently to fully appreciate it. Hey, Thierry! It's me! Oh! Now, what brings you here, Miss Navia? I've heard that you made quite the name for yourself at the Opera House. Oh, so you've caught news of that already. Oh, okay. Hey, I'm also a member of the Guards, you know. The way you make it sound, people would think I was sent off to Poisson because I had done something wrong. Are you sure there isn't a little bit of truth in that? Under normal circumstances, shouldn't you have been called back to the city already? <laughs> I mean, where I work is really up to me. Let's just say I enjoy the ambiance of Poisson. Callus did a fantastic job running the town. Building Spina di Rasula from the ground up and clearing many obstructions in my way. It would be next to impossible for me to find a similarly easy but high-paying job in the city. Anyway, enough chit-chat. Are these two friends of yours? You, uh, here for some formal business? Ah, uh, yes. These two are my partners. What happened at the Opera House made us realize that Linny's case, and my father's, may be related. We're trying to reinvestigate the details of my father's old case. Ah, I get it. You think there might be more to the case now that we know people can be dissolved into water, right? I was also flabbergasted when I first heard of it. If you want to go through the original files from your father's case, I can help you look for them. That'd be much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, actually, I have another question. 
Do you have the authority to dispatch Gardamex? Of course. Without them, I couldn't possibly handle Poisson on my own. Why do you ask? We definitely can't use them to forcefully get more evidence for your father's case. Well, you see, just recently, we were attacked by a horde of unnumbered Gardamex in the city. So, <laughs> if you hypothetically wanted to do something against me, all you would need to do was get rid of the Mecha serial numbers and send them after me. <laughs> then you think too highly of my abilities. Dispatching Mecha is very different from controlling them. If I had to make an analogy, when you order a dish, the chef will make it for you. You can ask the chef to cook, but not to massage your shoulders or carry your baggage. If you try to make unreasonable demands, the chef would just think you're out of your mind and ignore you completely. The same goes for me and my Gardamex. Removing a serial number is also not as easy as you might think. There are a lot of complex steps to it, and it's almost impossible to keep it a secret. So I can promise you, those mecha were definitely private units. They're certainly not cheap. So whoever their owner is must be super rich, powerful, or both. Now that you mention it, though, being in the synth business would definitely be profitable enough to afford this. Oh, <laughs> then you're officially in the clear, Thierry. Oh, <laughs> thank you for the vote of confidence, Navia. Jokes aside, I'd like to wish you all the best with your investigation. I'll be staying in the city for a little while, so just come find me if you need any support from the guards. Hello. How may I help you? I'm here to see Marcel. Could you please let him know? You can just say Navia's looking for him. Sure. I will let him know right away. Ah, Navia. Hello. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm not as young as I used to be, so my legs are giving out a bit. Oh, it's all right, Uncle Marcel. There's no need to stress. I just wanted to talk to you briefly about what happened in the Opera House. I'm sure you saw everything too, right? Yes, uh, I've never seen anything so strange. Oh, you were at the Opera House too? That's right. I went there with Navia to see the magic show. Who knew it would turn into a whole murder mystery? I also witnessed your marvelous sleuthing work. Quite impressive. To beat the Hydro Archon at her own game on her own turf, I can already imagine everyone in Fontaine discussing your exploits over a few glasses of wine. Oh, Paimon doesn't want to become the talk of drunkards. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. It's just how Fontaine is as a nation. Everyone loves drama and theatrics. Uncle Marcel, you've also noticed that other thing, right? The fact that humans can dissolve in water? Yes. I was reminded of your father's case right away. Is that what you're investigating now? Exactly. I still don't have much solid proof, but I can sense that the other side has already begun to act. Oh, and what makes you say that? We were attacked on Araneus by some unnumbered Gardamax. And there was also an attempt to get me to drink water from the Primordial Sea. If not for the vigilance of my partner, I probably wouldn't even be here talking to you right now. Oh, you're giving us too much credit. Wasn't it you who protected us? Alas. It seems things are heating up again. The peace that Callus sought so dearly will soon become a thing of the past. But rest assured, Navia, Poisson will always remain a safe haven for you. If you're scared, you can always return there. If anyone dares to lay their hands on you there, the Confrérie of Cabriere will use its funds to the last Mora to bring them to justice. Thank you, Uncle Marcel. 
But I don't intend to go into hiding. I'm going to strike while the iron's hot. Do you have any new thoughts on my father's case? Ah, about that. Sorry, my age is catching up with me, so it'll take me a while to recall my memory. The Conferee was responsible for that banquet, so I was out and about the whole time making sure things were running smoothly. I didn't even have the time to drink with the guests. Then I heard the sound of a gunshot, and the rest was history. Oh, it's okay. No need to push yourself. We'll ask around some more, see if there are any valuable clues elsewhere. Sounds good. Just let me know if you ever need Mora. All my wealth comes from Callus's patronage and support. I'll spend however much it takes to clear his name. We've talked to all three suspects, purely based on their conversations with me. None of them sounded particularly suspicious. Mm, I, I suppose that's to be expected, though. If a single conversation's all that's needed to find them out, then my father wouldn't have needed to investigate the case for so many years. Anyway, even though we didn't make a breakthrough, let's still compile what we were able to find. Hmm. But... Where should we start? Ah, oh, you're right! Floral mentioned that Callus probably only ended up with the gun because of circumstance. Hmm, that makes sense. According to Jacques' family members, he already told them that he had been discovered and that he had no choice before he left home that day. Hmm, if I had to guess, he probably received an order from the synth boss to kill my father. Had he refused, he and his family's lives would have been forfeit. So, Jacques fired the first shot? Oh? And why is that? Ooh, that's a good point. Jacques probably already knew that he was just being used as a tool for murder. And once he had completed his mission, he'd be of no more use to his boss. Huh. So, what would make more sense from his perspective would be to turn his back on the Order and seek protection from my father. Makes sense. But without evidence, that's still just a theory. Besides Jacques, the attack from the Gardamex has been bothering me quite a bit as well. It's obvious that our enemy has become more antsy after the secret of the primordial seawater was revealed. Do you think he knew, even then, that we'd follow this lead to the end? Given everything that's happened since, it's quite possible. But who among the three suspects would have the ability to control privately owned Gardamex? <laughs> Uncle Marcel? Uh, hmm. My father did really trust him. And they worked together on a large number of projects. Maybe that's how he got to know Jacques. And with funds from the Confrerie, he could also afford a large number of Gardamex. It's still really hard for me to imagine, though. After all, Uncle Marcel has been around since I was just a child. Also, wouldn't this mean he has been spending a whole lot of mora and energy to fight his own synth business? Flora? Uh, it is true that he was closest to my father and thus had the best chance of learning about his dealings with Jacques. But, as Spina di Rosula's advisor, his work mostly deals with personnel and security, so he shouldn't have much means when it comes to finances. So you're saying he's too broke to afford a mecha army? Exactly. He can't. And even if he could, 
I don't think he would be able to dispatch a whole group. Thierry, you say? Huh. It is possible that he's figured out a way to convert the Gardamex for personal use, but I didn't feel like he was lying when he was talking to us about the Mecha. I also don't think he'd be able to keep that kind of tampering under wraps. Yeah. Had he actually tampered with the Mecha, we'd be able to prove it with a simple check of the guard's inventory. If the Mecha were taken from the guards, it should be pretty easy to find out when and how that happened. <sighs> Who could it be? You know, if you think everything through, Uncle Marcel is indeed the most suspicious of them all. Could we be missing other suspects? Malus didn't know about the people turning into water thing when he narrowed it down to these three, did he? <sighs> Malus has always been very reliable, and his judgment of others' trustworthiness has been fair and well considered. When he laid out his case for the three, the rationale he gave me made a lot of sense as well. The suspect is knowledgeable about the Spina's internal affairs, has the means to dispatch Mecha to assassinate us, and possesses significant intellect and foresight. <sighs> Even if I don't want to believe it, I'm starting to see how things could all tie back to Uncle Marcel. Well, we still have another trump card on top of all the theorizing and speculating. Yes. Malus did say that charging straight in there would be extremely risky. But we don't have any other options right now. We need far more solid proof before we can hope to go charging in on our enemy. Navia, here you are. Oh, I've been looking for you. Huh? Aren't you the guy from the guards? Did something happen? Yeah. News came from Arrhenius just after you left. We've got another trial on our hands. Wasn't that place built specifically for holding trials? What's so newsworthy about this one? I know, I know. But they said the person they're putting on trial is a Fatui Harbinger called Tartaglia. What? Is that someone you know? Yeah, we know him. Maybe even a little too well. Well, he's been accused... of being the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case. It's absurd, don't you think? Wait, how? None of our investigations have had anything to do with him. That's what I thought was strange about it, so I came to tell you the news right away. If the charge against him stands, then it'll be next to impossible to get the guards to support any of our planned investigations. Right, because they'll think they've already found the culprit. Yeah. And it'll be a lot harder than to clear Mr. Callus's name. Hmm. I understand. <sighs> well, partner, what do you think we should do? We still haven't found any conclusive evidence. Uh... Um... Split up? What do you mean? <laughs> Just as expected of my partner. Since this is a trial about the serial disappearances case, the culprit's attention will be focused on Arrhenius, leaving his home base wide open. You're right. This is our best opportunity. <laughs> All right then, let's do this. I'll stall them at the Opera House and charge Marcel as the true culprit. I won't have any chance of making that charge stick, though, unless we find more evidence. It'll be up to you to make it back in time and hand the decisive evidence to me. We'll help! 
help you, just like you helped us in Lenny's trial. Demoiselle, please allow us to accompany you. I'm ready. Ah, oh, Malou, Silver, when did you two get here? We heard that you'll be leaving Poisson and figured that you might require our assistance. It's our hope that your confidence will be bolstered with the two of us by your side. <laughs> Thank you so much. Then, let's make haste for Arrhenius. Pime. See you then! Now that Navia has set out for Arrhenius, we should also get going. The location has already been marked on the map, so let's head over. Huh. According to Malusa's info, the synth production base is underwater. Let's go and try to find the entrance. that leads to the synth production base. Ah, you're right. An important place like this is bound to have a ton of protective measures and mechanisms. Navia's probably arguing up a storm right now to stall for us. It would appear that I must repeat my question again, Mr. Tartaglia. Do you accept the charge that you are the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case? To be perfectly honest, I don't understand your country's complicated court system, or the reason why I'm being charged with something I've never even heard of. However, I did hear that people who have been charged can choose to participate in a duel to clear their name. Is that right? In which case, as long as I accept the charge, I can have an all-out fight with that champion duelist, Clorend, right? I've got to admit, that's one of the most enticing offers I've ever received. When I privately sparred with her last time, she was obviously holding back. Real disappointing. Hey! Don't you understand? You're currently the prime suspect for a major case. This isn't the place for you to be looking for fights. Oh? Sounds like the Hydro Archon wants to lecture me on the ways of the Opera House. Then why don't you duel me too? I'm the kind of student that learns best in the heat of battle. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. That's not what I meant. Alas, it would appear that communication with the defendant is going poorly. And we have made very little progress. In that case, let me explain everything from the very beginning again. The goal of this trial is to determine the culprit behind the serial disappearances case. <laughs> that case had nothing to do with him! You've got the wrong man! Huh? What's going on? <sighs> Why is she interjecting again? <laughs> I told you it couldn't be one of the Fatui Harbingers. Miss Navia, this is the second time you've interrupted the court proceedings. I only tolerated your behavior last time because you were able to provide the court with a key eyewitness. But that was an exception rather than standard court protocol. I can very well charge you with contempt of court for your interjections. Oh, please. Did you ever think I had any respect for this place's pointless theatrics? <laughs> we can put that discussion aside for now. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm here to charge the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case. And if my charges prove true, then Tartaglia here will be proven innocent by default, correct? Oh, a young lady has charged in and offered to clear my name. How fascinating. Well, I'd gotten half bored to death by all these rules and procedures anyway. 
so I'll take you up on that offer. So, Your Honor, is there nothing else for me to do now? You may take a seat for now in the audience, but that doesn't mean the suspicions against you have been lifted. Now then, Miss Navia, who is the person you would like to charge instead? That person is... Of Cabriere! Huh? What Confrere? Never heard of them in my life! I've heard of them, but weren't they Spina di Rosula's sister organization? Oh, is this going to be a friends to enemies type situation? Please let me remind you, Miss Navia, that charging someone is an incredibly serious matter. Committing to the charge also means taking on the legal responsibilities associated with it. And if the charge fails, depending on the circumstances, you may also be charged with the crime of making a false accusation. Knowing this, do you still wish to charge this man? Yes, I do. In that case, I declare the charge to be valid. Miss Navia and attorneys, please take your places on the court. Members of the guards, please contact Mr. Marcel right away so that he may stand trial. Mr. Marcel, you will not require an attorney, is that correct? Ah, apologies, sir. It all just happened so quickly, I still haven't figured out what's going on. I think an attorney won't be necessary. This is probably just a misunderstanding between me and Navia. Very well. In that case, since both sides have now arrived, Miss Navia, please present your charges. I would like to take everyone back to three years ago, to the case of Callus the Unfaithful. Only through elucidating what really happened in that case can we connect all the dots for the serial disappearances case. Navia, do you really think that I was the one who killed your father? Come on, why would I do that? Callus was my benefactor, and remember both you and I only ran to the scene when we heard the sound of a gun. If that's enough to make me a suspect, wouldn't that make everyone at that banquet a suspect as well? I... Uh, I think there's no point in getting into the specifics right now. The audience doesn't even have the big picture yet. Even I'm <clears throat> struggling to remember some details of that case. Exactly correct, Your Honor. I must refresh everyone's memory about that case before I can explain my charge and reasoning. I see. In which case, I will recount the findings about that case as originally recorded by Maison Guardianage. On the day of the murder, Spina di Rosula hosted a large banquet in a countryside estate owned by the Conferee of Cabriere. During the banquet, all attending guests heard two gunshots from the courtyard. When the guests arrived at the scene, they found the primary suspect, Callis, holding a gun, while his acquaintance, Jacques, lay dead from a gunshot wound. The guards' investigation did not recover any other firearms from the scene. As a result, they concluded that the suspect's first shot must have missed, while the second must have taken Jacques' life. The suspect did not dispute this conclusion, and also declined to defend himself in court. Instead, he chose to prove his innocence through a duel. Callus was defeated by champion duelist Clarand in the ensuing duel, and soon succumbed to the injuries. These are the known facts about the case. <sighs> the one with the motive to kill was Jacques. Not my father. And even so, Jacques still had no reason to pull the trigger. Uh, in truth, the third person shot Jacques first, and was shot in turn by my father when my father seized the gun from him. After that, the true culprit turned the third person into water, erasing all traces of him from the scene. <clears throat> Thank you for the summary, Your Honor. Of course, the guard's conclusion appeared quite sensible to us at the time. 
However, we should revisit the case now that we've gained new information about the abilities of water from the Primordial Sea. The testimony of the victim's family confirms that Jacques had thoughts of assassinating Callus when he set out for the banquet. However, in the end he reconsidered, and instead shared everything with Callus, hoping to seek the latter's protection. Unfortunately for Jacques, the true culprit had already considered this possibility, and had sent out another assassin. This assassin first shot Jacques, then turned to shoot Callus, only for Callus to wrestle the gun from him and kill him instead. A pile of clothing was found at the scene. The guards once believed they were used by Jacques as a costume to disguise himself. But since it was raining that day, the culprit was confident that they could use the rain to wash away all traces of their dissolved accomplice. Realizing this, the true culprit caused the hired assassin to dissolve into water, leading everyone to believe Callus was responsible for Jacques' murder. This is the true version of events. what happened wait you're telling me something as dangerous as water from the primordial sea has been used for all these years what a great theory it also explains Callus's and jacques respective motives i guess they didn't shoot each other after all mr marcel you are the one being charged with the crime you should provide a rebuttal if you wish to prove your innocence ah but i think i agree with everything navia just said in fact there was nothing in her speech that directly implicated me then, may I ask some questions? In my opinion, we primarily need to determine two things. One, do you have the evidence to back up your claims? <sighs> I'm afraid not. At least not at this very moment. Boo! <laughs> if you don't have any evidence, you should just go home! I may not have the evidence with me, but I know where I could go to collect it. If we look up the deserted clothes against a record of people who went missing around the same time, we should be able to find a match. Considering the serial disappearances case, the guards probably kept careful records of all missing persons from around that time, regardless of age or gender. That makes sense to me. Monsieur Nouvellet, I would consider this to be a reasonable investigative direction. Huh. Why do I feel like Farina's acting a little differently today? Maybe she's scared of embarrassing herself again? Alternatively, she's become more diligent after charging an innocent citizen in the last trial. My second question has to do with the ensuing duel. If the truth is indeed as you described, then why didn't Mr. Callus explain himself in court? If he had testified that a person had been dissolved, he could have at least mounted a defense. I've thought about this too, and the answer is actually pretty simple. He felt there were things that were more important to him. The dissolving power of water from the Primordial Sea is an important secret for the true culprit of the serial disappearances case. My father could have exposed it for all to see, but he chose to take it to the grave. At that time, Spina di Rosula was in dire straits, and his reputation had already been shattered. He had no guarantee that going forward with the truth would allow the culprit to be brought to justice. What was certain, however, was that it would paint a gigantic target on my back. Boss once told me that Demoiselle had already been selected as the next target of the serial disappearances case. What? If the secret had gotten out, the culprit would have fought an all-out war with Espina right there and then. I wouldn't have been the only one in danger. All of us would have stood to lose our lives. Of course, the guards might eventually figure out the truth of the matter and determine that we were in the right. But what good would that do? 
How can a hollow verdict protect anyone? Had this opera house ever given my father any kind of confidence in its brand of justice, Spina di Rosula would have had no reason to exist. But by staying silent, we retain the ability to deter our opponents and continue the stalemate. I was able to become Spina di Rosula's president, which made me harder to target, as well as giving me more time to grow and learn. And once I have figured out the truth and stepped up to the challenge, I will do what this opera house cannot and restore my father's truth and honor back to him. So, you mean to say, your father intended to die in the duelist's ring? That's right. Do you have any proof? Of course. All you need is to ask his opponent, Clorand. I don't need your apology, your guilt, or your support from the shadows. You don't have to do anything for my sake. But since he entrusted his will to you, Clorand, you should tell us the truth about his sacrifice. Um, so, during the duel, did you believe that Callus was intending to die? <sighs> yes, I did. As a champion duelist, I fought many battles and taken a countless number of dishonored lives. In my line of work, I've seen all kinds of people give their all for the faintest hope to continue living. Some were determined, others passionate, and some even manic and twisted. Just one look and I can tell if a duelist is hoping to live or if they're looking to die. I hereby swear on my name and honor as a champion duelist that Mr. Callus never intended to leave the ring alive. Since that's your testimony, I have no more questions. It appears there really are good grounds to reopen this case. I concur. However, Miss Navia, you still have not explained the link between your father's case and the serial disappearances case. Right? What she said was fascinating, but kind of beside the point. Wait, weren't they just talking about the serial disappearances case? Of course, Your Honor. The two cases are connected via a matter of timing. In my father's case, the culprit intended to kill both Jacques and Callus. As a result, they planned to act after hearing two gunshots. And, at the end of Linny's trial, the culprit also only dissolved the victim in front of everyone because they realized they were at risk of being identified. The culprit could only time their actions so precisely if they were already at the scene. Coincidentally, Marcel attended both the banquet and the trial. So that's why you suspected me. <sighs> Even after hearing your reasoning, I still can't help but find it a little preposterous. I'm used to it, though. You've always been an impulsive and sentimental child, Navia. It's one of your most endearing traits. No need to appeal to pathos. I won't try to refute your points one by one, but even if everything you just said was true, can you prove that I was the only person present at both events? On top of that, does a person have to be physically present to control the timing? Can't someone remotely monitor the place? Uh... Oh, don't know what she can say to that. I know that even with that, you might still think you can reduce the list of suspects with some further investigations until I'm the only one left on the list. Alas, who won't feel at least a little hurt by an accusation of murder from a girl you see as your own daughter? But if I were to dismiss this completely, you'd also think I'm not being considerate of your feelings. Ah well, let Uncle Marcel teach you another lesson. Do you know what the biggest flaw in your reasoning is? I suppose you're gonna tell me anyways. It's timing again. I'm a businessman by trade. From that standpoint, there's no reason for me to kidnap young women. It's a high-risk action with nothing to gain. In addition, I left my home in Snezhnaya when I was young to come to Poisson and work in some trade. My business only thrived when I received Callus' patronage. But the disappearances began before I ever stepped foot in Fontaine. Uh, I do apologize, Demoiselle. This was my mistake. No, it's not your fault. I'm sure he had come prepared. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Would you like to check the date of my first business license against the first known case of the serial disappearances? You can also take a look at my border entry records, or ask my friends and family when I left Snezhnaya for the first time. 
Could those records and testimonies do something to appease the unspeakable anguish in your heart? Oh, seems like she got the wrong guy. At this rate, Nagi will be convicted for falsely accusing him. I think you've done a superb job of dissecting your father's feelings as he neared the end of his life. But aren't you going against all of his wishes and expectations right now? He wished for you to become more rational, collected, and conscientious, instead of dwelling only on your own feelings. Once you've learned to be more considerate of others' feelings, and to stop rushing headlong into things, you'd have met most of his expectations. This isn't just about me. And it never has been. The biggest difference between me and the rest of the victims is that I still have the ability to search for the truth, while that same agency has long been taken from then. The people whose families were destroyed by synth abuse, the people who lost their loved ones to the serial disappearances, and the people who suffered tragic ends due to their sense of justice. Many people's images are flashing before my eyes. I'm sure some are coming to those of you in the audience as well. And whose image do you see, Marcel? Is it a man named Vache? <laughs> oh, so you do know that name. <laughs> I'm merely surprised you'd suddenly say the name of someone I've never even heard of. I was waiting for you to say that.
water level is rising. Now we can swim to the top. But this is still a ways away from where we need to go. Hold the line. Our bond is strong. Flicker. Process of elimination. Though, as expected, the Mastermind isn't here. Ah, that's right. Then let's hurry up and find some evidence so we can get back to the Opera House and help Navia! Here. And so many bottles of ingredients. 
ingredients that probably just contain the waters of the primordial sea. Hmm. Mixing in progress. Ready to drink. Stack sample? Huh. They've also got all the synths pretty clearly labeled. Whoa, there's even fruit flavored synth? Yep, it's super obvious. What's this over here? Looks like some kind of place for research. Experiment number 16 aims to verify Jacob Ingold's research conclusions on the primordial sea and use his theory as a foundation to achieve a breakthrough. The experiment was a failure. No individual managed to resurface from the water from the primordial sea. Female specimens 22, 23, and 24 were dissolved! <coughs> Sorry, Traveler. Paimon will try her best. It's just... that... Paimon's never read something so scary before! How could someone write something that terrible in such a matter-of-fact tone? You read the rest. Paimon's too scared to keep going. So that's why you did all of these experiments. Wait... Did he really think he'd be able to find a way just by dissolving people over and over? That's just insane! Huh? Is it that the name you heard by the fountain? Paimon thought he was an eyewitness in the serial disappearances case. Ah, <sighs> You mean Vache is the one who did all of these... Uh, experiments? So that's it! Vache was no victim! but personally took his lover and... No, that's not it either! If that's the case, why would he want people to resurface from the water? In any case, Paimon will write it all down. Let's see what's written here. Nothing escapes Detective Paimon's eyes! Hmm... Callus... Navia's father... Oh, this seems to be an investigation report on him! Hmm... Hmm... Yep! It's about finding someone to assassinate Jacques and Callus because of a lack of confidence that Jacques himself would go through with it! This should prove the existence of the third person, right? Hmm... We still have not determined the exact content of the key information Callus has passed on to certain members of his organization. The old dog's a real menace to deal with. Even if he abides by the promise he's made to us, he will still have the upper hand. He can act whenever he wants to make our lives miserable. The only option left is to remove him from the picture entirely. I concur. Let's send someone to kill him. He won't declare war as long as we don't touch Navia. Oh, seems like we've got a bunch of correspondence between the higher-ups. <laughs> They're all just so evil. Oh, look! There's an important-looking basin over here. And it's full of water. That means... This is where they make all the synth! And that special water is the main ingredient! If you dilute it with normal water, you'll get synth! But the pure stuff can dissolve a human! Paima will take notes on this incriminating evidence!
cute things labeled with different girls Huh? You mean the girls from the serial disappearances? They were brought here? And then they were turned into water and all the boxes of things. These names. That means... Oh, this is terrible. We've looked at almost everything here and it seems like our theories were spot on. But... Yeah. We haven't found anything that reveals his true identity. No wonder even Nervalette wasn't able to find anything. Whoever it is probably destroyed everything to do with that name a long time ago. That way, even if we bring all this back to the opera, we won't be able to identify the true culprit. Sure thing, Paimon won't admit defeat to this guy either. And whose image do you see, Marcel? Is it a man named Vache? <laughs> oh, so you do know that name. I'm merely surprised you'd suddenly say the name of someone I've never even heard of. I was waiting for you to say that. Navia, we're back! Uh, as expected of my partner, I just knew you'd return in the nick of time. Just how often do you intend to flout the rules of this court? It's all right, Monsieur Nervalette. Given their confidence, I expect they've found the crucial evidence. But the truth of it, Marcel, is that you've always been Vache. Huh? We've investigated your lair and we already know everything! After your lover, Vinier, was dissolved, you kept abducting young women to experiment on the hopes of bringing her back to you! You even created Marcel as a new identity and destroyed all records of your past as Vache! So 
that's it. Even the villains in opera performances rarely go that far. And with that, Marcel's motive has now been established. This information regarding your past also dismantles your prior timing defense. Well, Marcel, do you know where you went wrong? <sighs> you fixated your gaze on the lover that passed away, instead of paying attention to the living people around you. So, you never noticed how we changed, or how we grew as individuals. You also never understood Boss's real expectations for his daughter. Or our determination to see things through. Your determination? <laughs> Mr. Marcel, please speak up now if you would like to defend yourself. Otherwise, the trial will move on to the next stage. Do you think... Do you really think I wanted to do any of this? Pay attention to you? <laughs> what for? Have you ever paid attention to me? Ever empathized with my pain? Ever known how it feels to watch the love of your life dissolve right in front of your eyes? No one helped me. No one even believed me. All those decades ago, even the officers from the Maison Guardianage were laughing at me. They said there's no way a human being can turn into water. So I must have gone mad from grief. Vinyar's death was brushed away by all of you as if it didn't matter at all. Well, now you know, don't you? Ha! Well, it's too late now. All those who were dissolved are gone forever. You only have yourselves to blame. You set up this ornate opera house in pursuit of your so-called justice, your beloved drama, while turning a blind eye to the suffering of the people. Vinyar is dead. We promised each other that we would always be together. Wherever she goes, I will follow. But I'm not from this blasted place. So I can't be dissolved. No matter what I do. Hey, is that water from the primordial sea that he's drinking? I can't dissolve. Can't dissolve. Can't dissolve! <laughs> Do you all see? I can't go! I can't follow! So if I can't go where she is, what choice do I have but to try to bring her back? I did all of that, and in the end, that accursed callus still got the better of me. I spent my entire life living on pins and needles! only to get stabbed by his idiot daughter at the very end. <laughs> the suspect is exhibiting signs of mental distress. Guards, please restrain him. Don't touch me! Don't anybody come near me! I still need to save Vinyar. A promise! We made a promise! Vinyar! Vinyar! Please, Vinyar, don't think badly of me. All I want to do is fulfill our promise. At this point, the verdict of this trial is clear. With Mr. Marcel's conviction, the charges against Mr. Tartaglia no longer have any basis. Fine by me. I was in a bad mood, but after a show like that, I'm actually feeling pretty good. Traveler. Please submit all the evidence you have collected to the guards, so that I might review and summarize the truth behind the serial disappearances case. The man now known as Marcel was originally named Vache, and worked as an adventurer with his partner and lover, Vignier. During an underwater expedition, Vignier accidentally came into contact with water from the Primordial Sea, and was dissolved in front of Vache as a result. Vache learned of the primordial water's existence through the work of others and began to kidnap young women for research, with the goal of discovering a method to restore Vignier back to life. To cover his tracks, he invented the new alias of Marcel and began to operate a business in Poisson. During the course of his research, Vache discovered that a diluted concoction of water from the primordial sea can induce feelings of euphoria and began to manufacture and market synth. However, as he accumulated wealth to fund his continued research and expanded the scope, he came into conflict with Spina di Rasula. 
After exchanging blows with Spina de Rasula for many years, Vache decided to assassinate their president, Callus, at a banquet. Although the assassination did not go as Vache expected, he was able to turn Callus into the murder suspect by dissolving the assassin he sent to the scene. And just recently, Vache attempted to frame Linny as the culprit of the serial disappearances case using a similar method. However, his attempt to frame Linny failed, and the power of water from the primordial sea became public knowledge. This case also exposed enough of Vache's machinations that he was eventually successfully charged in court. Thus concludes the enigmatic history of the serial disappearances case, with the truth revealed to all. The Oratrice will now deliver the final verdict regarding the charges against Mr. Vache. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mécanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Mr. Vache is guilty. Vashay away. Good. It's what he deserves. Uh, with that, the serial disappearances case is over now. We really just witnessed history. Who would have thought the true culprit would be such a polite and well-spoken guy? Yippee! We help Navia bring the bad guy to justice! He's hurt so many innocent people and now he's finally getting what he deserves! Huh? Are you okay? <sighs> Demoiselle, you were absolutely brilliant. The day our late boss had always hoped for has finally come. You can rest easy now, knowing justice has been served. Yeah. Yeah. It's finally over. It's all thanks to you guys. And my partner. See, Papa? Spina di Rosula still doing well with me at the helm. Well now, hasn't this been a most delicious piece of drama? The villain has been caught, justice has been served, past wrongs have been righted, and it's a big ol' happy ending. Since it's been such a great show, I'll just let the false accusations against me slide. Either way, I've still got some business to attend to, so, if you'll excuse me... Please wait just one moment, Mr. Tartaglia. Ugh, what now? None of this has anything to do with me. According to court protocol, since this trial was initiated due to a charge against you, a verdict must also be made regarding the initial charge before the trial can conclude. Oh, come on. Is this really necessary? Haven't you already caught the real criminal? Isn't it time for side characters like me to exit stage left? Please respect the laws of Fontaine. This has always been the rule. All right, all right, but this sure is a lot of hassle. All I need to do is stand over there, right? Let's just get this over with. Through evidence presented in the public trial that was just held, it has been established that Mr. Tartaglia has no direct connection to the serial disappearances case. The guilty party has been identified, and thus, it is logical to suppose Mr. Tartaglia is innocent of the charges. We now turn to the Oratrice Mécanique d'Analyse Cardinal to render the final verdict on... Hmm... According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mécanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Mr. Tartaglia is... guilty. What?! Hey, hey! That's not funny! Didn't you just say I'm supposed to be innocent? What's with this verdict? Is your justice machine malfunctioning? Huh? This has never happened before. The Oratrice actually returned a different verdict from the Chief Justice. I mean, have you ever heard of an innocent Fatui Harbinger? Do you think the Oratrice might have just convicted him on general principle? But weren't the charges about the serial disappearances case? No matter what else he's guilty of, it shouldn't affect the verdict in this case, right? The judgment of the Oratrice Mécanique d'Analyse Cardinal is, by law, the final verdict of the court. 
We must accept the guilty verdict. Guards, please take the suspect into custody per court protocol. So this is how justice is done in Fontaine. What a joke. You've got your rules. Well, I've got mine too! I am sorry. If you have been wronged, we will find the truth. But the rules of the court must be upheld. Apologies. This is also the first time I've encountered such a situation. However, according to the rules established at the conception of Fontaine's court system, the Oratrice's judgment is the final verdict of the court. All I do is follow court procedure. As for why the Oratrice arrived at the conclusion it did, you should probably ask someone more knowledgeable than me. Uh, why are you looking at me? I had nothing to do with it! I don't know what happened there either! Hey, stop staring at me! What does Lady Farina mean by that? She says she has no idea either? But that's impossible! Didn't she create the Oratrice herself? Yeah, so are the verdicts reliable or not? Can results like this really be called justice? <sighs> My dearest citizens, did you really think we'd allow an incorrect verdict to be handed out in this court? Did you really believe that the judgment could be mistaken or be the result of some sort of random mishap? Don't tell me. You thought even I had been blindsided by the Oratrice's result. But the way she looked just now, it was pretty obvious she had no idea what was going on. However, given the state of things, I shall give you an explanation. Everything that just took place, including my supposed shock and bafflement, was a part of an elaborate performance, with every action meant to stir up drama and excitement. And, <laughs> of course, for every performance there is a script. Everything has unfolded exactly as I expected from the very beginning. As the embodiment of the very concept of justice, the Oratrice shall never render an arbitrary judgment! If you thought Child had nothing to do with the serial disappearances case, it is only because you've been blinded by the superficial appearance of innocence. Everything he's done, not to mention the danger he poses, are beyond ordinary comprehension and completely unforgivable! All shall be revealed in time. You will come to understand my noble intentions, as well as the absolute correctness of the Oratrice's verdict. <laughs> now, having said that, Although I hate to leave things hanging in suspense, it is now time for this performance to end. As the lead actress, I shall be the first to take my leave. Toodaloo! So she chose to make her escape after all, did she? Uh... So you're saying we shouldn't put much stock into what she just said? Hmm. <laughs> she probably just put on that performance to save face. As for the truth... It's unlikely that she actually has any idea.
However, please be assured that I will continue to investigate this case in a personal capacity. Just as I promised, if the judgment has been incorrect, we will do our utmost to clear his name. All right. Even though we feel pretty badly for him, we'll take your word for it for now. After all, he's done plenty of bad stuff. So he should have known he'd go to prison someday, right? What shall we do? Need to end a few enemies? What are you doing? Quick, stop him! Traveler! Hey! Traveler! Ah! Marcel! What are you doing over here? Stop resisting arrest! Cease, or we'll add another charge to the list! No, 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 wait! I, I just want to ask the Traveler something. I I'm not looking to run away. Please, please, just let me ask this one small thing. Go on. Thank you. Thank you. I was being led away when I finally realized something. Where did you first hear the name Vache? I erased all records of that name. So, unless... Are you still trying to prove your innocence? Give it up. You've already been convicted. Uh, really? Y y you did? You're sure? You met her? But how could that be? How did you manage to do it? The Fountain of Lucene? Then... Then she's been so close to me all along. And I just never... Please, please give me a chance to talk to her again. Just let the Traveler take me to the fountain to see her one last time. This is the last request I'll ever make in my life. You can do whatever you want to me afterwards. I don't care. What? Give an inch and you want to take a mile? Do you think serial killers get to make requests like that? Hmm. Paimon agrees. Why should we give him what he wants when he's only done a ton of super terrible things? This request... Is it worth as much to you as your life? Of course! Wait, no. It's worth even more than my life. Humans. Will they betray the instinct to live just to satisfy spiritual needs? Very well. I will grant your request. Your Honor, I fear that... I will go with him. You do not need to worry about any escape. <sighs> in that case, I shall leave him in your most capable hands, Chief Justice. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor.
this the place? You said she's here, but what do I need to do to see her? Yeah, and even Paimon could hear her after drinking that thing. Didn't you just drink a lot of it on the stage as well? Oh, in that case... Vashe! Ah! Yes, that's it! So you heard it too! Vinier, it's me! It's me, Vashe! Vashe? Vashe? I'm here! I'm here! Where are you, Vinier? I'm coming for you! I'm finally here for you! Hey, wait! Be careful! Hey! Vinier, is that you? It's me, Vashe! Vin Vashe? Why did you come? Didn't I say? You don't need to look for me. You... You look a lot older than I remember. How long has it been? It's been... More than 20 years. I've suffered for over 20 years since the day you left. All this time, only the thought of bringing you back has kept me alive. Nothing else mattered to me. Oh, I must be dreaming. Who would have thought I'd get the chance to tell you all of my feelings like this? Vinier, you are my everything. I really don't know how I could live without you. But Vache, if you ask me, this world would be better off without you. Uh, wh what are you saying? If not for you, I would have finished my law degree and probably become a top-tier attorney one day. If not for you, I would have continued to pursue my love of the arts, and my works would have been displayed in the Palais Mermonia itself. If not for you, I would at least have been able to take care of my mother. And she would not have grown old and died alone, with nothing but the tears on her cheeks. It's all because of your selfishness, Vashe. It's all because of you. You... Wait, you are not Vignere. Who are you? You're right. I am not Vignere. I am... The sacrifices. Every woman who died by your hand. As our bodies dissolved, our consciousnesses flowed back to the primordial sea. Our thoughts circulated endlessly within the primordial sea, and we were no longer individuals. But we became one, just as streams of water come together in the sea. I'm Cressy. I'm Lemony. I'm Azine. The only one I am not is Vignier. Why? But then, where is Vignier? She doesn't want to see you anymore. Every tendril of her consciousness is avoiding you. This is what you get for your selfishness. Your selfishness robbed us of our lives and our futures. You said time and time again that you'd do any and everything for her. But did you ever consider whether she'd want to see you do the things that you did? If she would despise you for what you became? I... um... I... You are a liar, a heartless murderer, and a cowardly narcissist. The only thing you are not is Vignier's beloved. From the moment your first victim died and her consciousness merged with Vignier's, she has had nothing but pure hatred for you. No! Vignier! She can't hate me. Let me see her. Please, have mercy. You still don't understand. When I said don't look for me, that came from the real Vignier. She really doesn't want to see you anymore. But on top of that, she also said that because it's her final drop 
of pity for you. She said that because she knew that if you did come here, we will show no mercy to you. Vashe. 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 Drown. Shopping! Gosh, it's really been a long time since we've been able to relax. Huh. Well met, partner. I knew something great was going to happen when I woke up in such a good mood today. Even this weather can't put a damper on the demoiselle's mood. It's a pleasure to see you both again. easy to work with and always bring home the bacon. Who wouldn't treasure having a partner like me? <laughs> Sounds like you're really enjoying life these days, Navia. What have you been busy with since the trial? <sighs> it's just been one thing after the other. I've been making non-stop trips between Poisson and the courts in Sen. Everyone from Spina di Rosula organized a memorial for my father. We never held a memorial when he first died. Since everyone knew that even if we held one back then, no one was going to come. This time, though, everyone in Poisson, and even many people from the court all attended. Ah, so his name's definitely been cleared now. That's what we like to hear. It's been the dearest wish of Demoiselle all along. <laughs> that blasted stubborn fool. I was right to put my faith in him. I'm so glad I didn't give up on the case all those years ago. Oh, by the way, I ran into Charlotte just after I left the memorial service. Uh, well, maybe it'd be more accurate to say I knew she would be there, and there was no way she'd just let me go. Huh? So you know Charlotte too? The Charlotte? Journalist from the Steambird? Yeah, way back when I first became the president of the Spina di Rosula, she was all over me. Wouldn't take no for an answer. I believe the story was called The True Heart of Darkness, Secret Tales of the Yellow Rose. To be fair, though, it was a really flattering feature. <laughs> so we've been on pretty good terms ever since. She was trying to lean on our friendship to get me to do an exclusive piece on the serial disappearances case. Oh, yeah. She told us about that. She's always been super interested in that case, so now... Her wishes finally come true, too! Anyway, I told her to make sure that when she writes about you guys entering the Opera House with the critical evidence, that you both sound really cool. <laughs> now that's another thing to look forward to! We trust Charlotte's skills with a pen for sure! Oh, and in other news, I also took Clorand out for a meal. Oh, are you two on better terms now? Mm, while you were investigating Vache's headquarters, Clorand gave testimony on my father's behalf. It was thanks to her that we were able to turn the tide. I wanted to thank her. I mean, <laughs> there's also no point in being awkward all the time. So we took the chance to reconcile with each other. Oh, that's great. Paimon also thought Clorand wasn't actually a bad person. It's always good to have more friends. Anyway, now that the case has finally been solved, perhaps it will slowly begin to fade from the public consciousness. Oh, Actually, there's still one last thing I need to do. What is it? I should pay a visit to my father's grave and tell him the truth of what happened, as well as how it all ended. And on top of that, just how much people still look up to him to this day. That includes me, too. Miss Navia. Indeed. Mm -hmm. We want to go, too. We also think Callus is a really admirable person. Sure thing. I'd like you two to share the moment with me. 
After all, without you, there might not have been such a positive ending. And in that case, everyone, let's be off. Considering the recent weather, we'll be lucky if we can reach Poisson before dark. Yeah, you're right. It's been raining non-stop for a few days now. This is where my father's grave is. Hmm. To be perfectly honest, even I haven't been back here for... a long time. Huh? There's someone there already. Wait... That figure... It can't be... Hmm? Isn't that Nervalet? Why would the Chief Justice be here? Huh? Navia? <laughs> hmm... My apologies. I should have asked before coming to pay my respects. Don't say that. Sorry about that. Oh, uh, I was trying to say there's no need for you to apologize. I wanted to show my father how much I've grown. But still, I doubt I've grown to the point that even the Chief Justice would feel compelled to apologize to me over and over. In that case, I will stop apologizing for now. Hmm. You really could use some pointers on understanding human emotions, Monsieur Nervillet. In any case, why did you come to Poisson? Hmm. Well, ever since that day, I've been turning a question over and over in my head. Just what is justice, anyway? There was once a time when I didn't want to believe that there could be anything more important to humans than life itself. Oh, rather than that, it's probably more truthful to say I didn't believe humans were capable of resisting the most basic instinct of living things. That they could rebel against their own nature, or consider certain things to be more important than their own lives. Which is also why I didn't stop your father from beginning that fateful duel. I believed that a truly innocent man would never throw away his life like that. That there was nothing, should have been nothing more important than one's own continued survival. But Mr. Callus proved me utterly and decisively wrong. If not for his sacrifice, the serial disappearances case would have remained unsolved to this day. Mr. Callus made the choice he did for his daughter, for his associates, and for many people completely unrelated to him. And in the end, from a certain perspective, one could say that he did it all for the sake of justice. A justice that's higher than life itself. So, you asked me why I came here. I just wanted to say my apologies to Mr. Callis in person. I should have noticed all of this much sooner. This regret has filled me with a sadness that has haunted me for days. That high and mighty chair in the opera Epicles indeed insulates one from many important things. Spina di Rosula, thank you so much for your hard work and perseverance. Uh, I'm sorry for being mad at you before. So, you're actually one of those types that's cold on the outside, but pretty thoughtful on the inside, huh? That reminds me of Silver, one of my guys. Sorry about that. Self-expression is not one of my strong suits. <sighs> Didn't I just say you don't need to apologize? Ah, so Navia and Nervalette seem to have made their peace as well. Let's not disturb them for now. We can wait till after they're done. <sighs> Paimon's never paid respects at someone's grave before. Uh, did Paimon do anything rude there? for a bit. If we can't talk to Lady Farina, we can at least talk to him, right?
Oh, it's you two. Did Miss Navia invite you to come pay your respects to her father? Mm-hmm. We ran into Navia on the streets today, so we just followed her here. I see, I see. Then is there something that I can help you with? Uh, um, well, it's pretty hard to run into you like this since you're usually super busy. So we figured we could try to ask you a few questions, if that's okay. Please feel free. Though outsiders, you helped us solve one of the greatest mysteries in Fontaine, and it would be my pleasure to return the favor. Your sibling, another blonde-haired traveler. I'm sorry, but I've never seen anyone who matches that description. If he ever stepped foot in Fontaine, I'm sure he followed our laws to the letter and had no reason to appear on the stage of the opera Epicles. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? So, at court, the bad guys referred to that special water as water from the primordial sea, but what is it really? Truthfully, that name is already quite accurate. I can only surmise that Vache and his ilk only learned of its nature and existence after extensive research. There used to be a special sea on the surface of this planet. The nature of its seawater was rather different from that of the sea we know today. Most of Tevat's life forms were first born in that special sea. You could say it nurtured much of the life on this planet. Huh. So it really was where everything began. It makes sense to call it primordial, then. But today, the primordial sea no longer exists on the planet's surface. What Vashe discovered must have been some kind of special case, or a remnant from a truly ancient age. Huh. So that's how it is. Oh, you really know everything, Monsieur Nervalette. But if that's the case, then why would people, uh, at least people from Fontaine, dissolve in that kind of water? Indeed. Why would the primordial sea, which was known to engender and nurture life, suddenly reverse itself and devour life instead. To be frank, that also doesn't match my understanding of this world and its laws. There must still be some unknown secrets around the people of this land. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? That the sea levels will rise and everyone will be dissolved in water, leaving Farina crying alone on her throne, but the sins of the people will be finally washed away for good? Does that appropriately summarize the version you've heard? That's right! It was Linny that told us back then! And that about covers all the main points! Yes, up to the present, I think we reached a point where we have no choice but to confront this prophecy directly. Rumors have it that this prophecy is rooted in the last words the former Hydro Archon left to the world before she passed away. A prophecy? Of the former Hydro Archon? Wow. This is the first time that we've ever heard of it. Two parts of the prophecy have already proven correct. The rising sea levels and the ability of the people of Fontaine to be dissolved. We should be more vigilant and stay on the watch for further signs. Speaking of the prophecy... Farina has also always taken it quite seriously. Indeed, she has been collecting information and intelligence from across Tevat for this purpose. If the rumors were true, then perhaps this prophecy is the conundrum left to Farina by her predecessor. But with Farina being the way she is, can we really trust her to solve it? Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? My apologies. My investigation has still not reached its conclusion. However, I still believe the judgment of the Oratrice was not rendered arbitrarily. <gasps> but you also said you thought he was innocent! For many years, I have been quite aware that the Oratrice does not simply mechanically repeat the verdict that I give on each case. As a divinely created mechanism, the people's unified faith in the concept of justice is integrated into it. Not only can it produce the incredible power of indemnitium, but it likely also possesses other traits, such as self-awareness. Which is all to say, I have been prepared for a situation like this for a long time. Huh. So when Linny told us that he heard a human voice from the room where the Oratrice's core is stored... I was not aware such a thing had occurred. 
Perhaps that could serve to prove my conjecture. I will add that to the list of items to investigate. In any case, I am inclined to believe that the Oratrice does have a methodology all its own. We just do not have enough information. Based on Farina's reaction, I doubt even she had any idea what was going on. She managed to bluff her way through it, though, with her time-tested twin tricks of bravado and drama. While we do intend to get to the bottom of this, for now, we regret to say that the Fatui Harbinger will just have to bide his time in the Fortress of Meripede. If we did incorrectly convict him of crimes he did not commit, we will most certainly compensate him to the fullest extent allowed by the law. If you ask Paimon, the only compensation he'll want is a no-holds-barred fight with you. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? Very well. It was my honor to provide you with what answers I could. I very much enjoyed conversing with you. It will soon be time for me to leave this blissful tranquility behind and return to Palais Memonia. You really are super busy, Monsieur Nervalette. Paimon thought you only came here to pay your respects today because you had the day off. Crime and villainy do not have the day off, and so justice must work around the clock as well. All right, all right, you've got a point. Huh? Paimon just noticed that the rain has stopped. As promised! <sighs> Navia is such a good person. Hmm, now that the serial disappearances case has been solved, no one's going to come after us for anything. Even without Silver standing guard, we can just completely relax. Why don't we stay and rest up here for a while? Even machines of Fontaine need to stop and recharge now and then. Oh, come on! This place isn't that bad. Paimon read before? Well, the author is about to release a new book, so Paimon wanted to buy it as soon as it came out and have a quiet place to read it. <laughs> then it's agreed. Come on, let's get some sleep. We'll need to be up first thing in the morning to get in line and buy a copy. Paimon didn't expect that. Detective novel? It's also like a social documentary. Oh, it's actually pretty good. Uh, no! Paimon just spends a bit more time sleeping than you, that's all. Excuse me. 
But do you know if the Traveler and Paimon are lodging here? Huh? Who are you? Paimon doesn't recall seeing you before. Wait, you're not here to give us trouble, are you? A blonde Traveler and a chatty little fairy. <sighs> Looks like I found the place. Good thing I asked the Spina di Rosula. Seems they sent me the right way. Hey, what do you mean by chatty? Paimon's always careful not to talk too much. Most of the time, anyway. It's an honor to meet you both. I was sent from the Palais Mermonia. Monsieur Nivellet wishes to see you. It seems he has something important to discuss in per- Nivellet? He wants to see us again already? Huh. We talked so much the last time we met. Has something happened since then? I am not privy to the details. It would be best if you came to the Palais Marmonia and asked Monsieur Nervilette in person. Mm, if you say so, but... Hyman has a bad feeling about this. <sighs> now that I've delivered the message, I'll take my leave. Thanks! We haven't left the room for a few days, so we'll head over once we've freshened up a bit. Yes, I did send someone to fetch you. But as for what I'd like to discuss next... Well, I still have some reservations. Given that we've already made the trip here, you should just tell us. Bet you need us to help you with something, right? I do indeed have something I'd like to ask you to do. However, you should wait until after I tell you the details, then decide for yourselves whether you'd like to help or not. The situation is this. It has come to my attention that the Snezhnayan Harbinger known as the Knave wants a diplomatic meeting with you, correct? I heard that she was originally from Fontaine, but for her to suddenly arrive here and abruptly request such a meeting like this, I sincerely advise you to refuse her invitation outright. Hmm. I'm sure you're aware that her purpose is most likely related to Child's recent predicament. We convicted one of the Snezhnayan Harbingers in a court of law, but we have yet to provide any form of detailed report on the matter. This does indeed provide an opportunity for Snezhnaya to put pressure on us. I believe we should adopt an evasive stance until we can provide a proper explanation and have a preliminary plan on how to deal with the matter. No, we shouldn't. I think we should agree to the meeting. Oh? Well, you see... We are the ones that owe an explanation. If we keep putting off the meeting, it could easily result in the problem escalating, right? It's like... like a fight between two friends. If they don't agree to see each other and talk in person, 
isn't it possible that the friendship could end entirely? Though diplomatic relations between Fontaine and Snezhnaya could be considered as friendly, it is only superficially so. You wouldn't go so far as to say that our nations are friends, as you did in your example. <sighs> it was just an analogy. An analogy, okay? Moreover, even if we were to talk in person, if we don't have sufficient information prepared, it is quite possible the result wouldn't be restored relations, but a complete falling out. Hmm. I don't think we should overthink those possibilities yet. Ahem. <clears throat> Even if the logic of the Divine is not immediately apparent, its wisdom will only be revealed with time. Besides, you'll be at the meeting. If any problems do pop up, you'll have no problem navigating them. I must clarify that interacting and communicating with people outside of court is not my cup of tea. It seems you think too much of me. But more importantly, when did I agree to join the meeting with you? No, no, that, that won't do! I can't go to the meeting alone! You have to accompany me! I must take you with me! Lady Farina, could there be something else regarding this matter that is being kept from me? No, not at all. Look, I am the Hydro Archon of Fontaine, Fosalor, the god of justice who is loved and adored by many. So, I only hope that justice will be served in this matter. Don't overthink it. I'll go find someone to arrange the meeting. <clears throat> Though it could officially be considered a diplomatic conference, I prefer to see our meeting today as an ordinary tea party. I assume you see it the same way, Miss Farina? Hmm. Lady Farina? Uh, oh! <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Just like you said, a tea party. <laughs> I should thank you for providing the pastries. They look delectable. To make this tea party even more lively, I've invited someone else to join us today. It's a pleasure to meet you, Monsieur Nuvillette. I was born in Fontaine, so naturally, there is no need to introduce the nation's revered Eudex to me. Hello. The pleasure is also mine. First, I would like to thank the two of you. I'm often away on business outside of Fontaine, and I'm told that the children of the House of the Hearth have been well taken care of by you. Uh... Oh! I'm not referring to when my children, Linny and Lynette, were falsely accused by you. Please don't misunderstand. The children of the House of the Hearth are often misunderstood. Perhaps due to the reputation of the Fatui. There's no getting around that. All I meant to say is that Fontaine has been stable in recent years. The people are well off and the children lead happy, fulfilled lives. That is something truly worth cherishing, and no one wishes to disrupt such peace. Now then, you have come regarding the matter of child, correct? Well, yes. It appears the ever-busy Eudex Nuvillette doesn't wish to waste time with diplomatic pleasantries, and hopes that we can get straight to the point of our talk. Yes, as you surmised, understanding child's situation is indeed one of the goals of this trip. As we are both diplomats from Snezhnaya, as well as Fatui Harbingers, Child and I have always been colleagues. Were anything to happen in Fontaine, each of us would serve as the other's attorney to resolve the issue. So now, in my capacity as his attorney, I request that Child be turned over to Snezhnaya. We have a responsibility to cooperate with Fontaine, and resolve what has happened to him together. The rules governing attorneys only apply before a trial has concluded. Since a verdict has already been rendered, we see the case as settled. I apologize for being unable to grant your request. An outright refusal. Very well. I respect all the rules of Fontaine's courts, just as I respect you as Chief Justice. Okay, why don't we back up a step? 
you don't need to transfer child to us. I only request to enter the fortress of Meripede to see child and confirm his condition. It's not like you couldn't even manage to fulfill a simple request like that. Right, Miss Farina? Uh, um, about that. The Fortress of Meripede has always been completely autonomous. Even we have no authority to interfere there, and diplomatic issues do not suffice as an excuse. However, if you absolutely must confirm the situation of the Harbinger, I have a proposal. The knave showed up already? Well, Lenny did say that Father will be returning soon. We didn't even know that Lenny was from the House of the Hearth at the time, so we kind of overlooked that information. Yes, thank you for your kind advice. I'm well aware of the situation. I also noticed that Lady Farina acts a little odd and unnatural whenever I bring up matters related to the knave. Threatening Lady Farina or something? If that were the case, then why wouldn't Lady Farina inform me? And what means could the knave possibly have to twist the arm of an Archon? Hmm, so maybe that's not very likely. Even though Farina can act a little weird at times, she's still an Archon. In reality, this problem is even more thorny than it appears. According to reports from the Fortress of Meripede, Child recently disappeared under mysterious circumstances. The details are still unclear. We cannot rule out an escape, but there have also been no reports of him outside of the Fortress of Meripede. Special guards oversee the fortress, and its internal systems are extensive. Combined with the special characteristics of the surrounding terrain, an escape should not be possible. I suspect that there's something else behind Child's disappearance. I was only willing to share this information with you because you are friends of Child, and it is my duty to see justice done. So this is what you wanted to see us about before? Yes. I would like you to go to the Fortress of Meripede and investigate Child's disappearance. This was my proposal during our meeting with the Knave. Rather than allowing her to intervene, I offered to send someone to find out about Child's situation and report back to her in detail. The Knave did not seem satisfied by my proposal, but she still agreed to go along with it for the time being. Her words were, We will talk more once we have that report. So that means we bought ourselves some time! Firstly, you're already acquainted with Child. Your eyes may discern relevant details there that others would miss. And secondly, is the consideration of the unique nature of the Fortress of Meripede. Isn't it just Fontaine's prison? I would not define it so crudely. The Fortress of Meripede is not affiliated with the court system of Fontaine on paper. It has always existed as an autonomous entity. Early in Fontaine's history, criminals were punished with exile, not imprisonment. Even today, sentences against convicted criminals still include exile, just as before. The Fortress of Meripede may seem like a prison, but it should in fact be regarded as a gathering place for exiles. All we do is dispatch guards to keep watch and help maintain security, but we have no right to get involved with any other matters. Although I do have a personal relationship with the administrator there, neither myself nor the courts have the right to be directly involved with the investigation, no matter how serious the grounds. Oh, Paimon gets it now! That's why you need us to conduct our own investigation as a third party, right? Correct. I will arrange false charges against you so that you may secretly investigate inside the fortress during your detention. This will save us a lot of unnecessary trouble. So, are you two willing to accept my proposal? Yeah, no matter how you look at it, it seems we're the best choice. Alright, we hereby accept this difficult task. Uh, reluctantly. You two have my sincere thanks. This matter is of critical importance to Fontaine's current situation. Also, I hope that both of you can keep this operation a secret. We will rendezvous at the Fortress of Meripede's entrance on Erinaeus once you've prepared yourselves. I will arrange for someone to take you inside. Prepared ourselves? Perhaps you could enjoy a good meal and have a nice bath. I'm afraid that living conditions inside the fortress are nothing like those on the outside world. Uh, on second thought, is it too late to back out? 
Please do not worry. Since you are sacrificing both your time and quality of life for the sake of delivering this report, you will be compensated according to the highest standards permitted to legal staff, regardless of the outcome. Now that's more like it! Come on, Traveler! Let's go eat the best meal we can find! We'll eat so much that we won't need to eat another meal for a whole month! Your treat! Are you leaving now? In that case, please take this cake as a token of my personal gratitude. Pretty good. But as soon as Paimon remembered that we we're about to go to prison, Paimon's stomach suddenly became completely empty. Now that Paimon thinks about it, we've always been super careful ever since we arrived in Fontaine. Just to avoid breaking any strange laws here. But here we are, about to willingly send ourselves. <sighs> Let's just try our best to investigate everything quickly once we get there. Paimon doesn't want to stay in prison too long. Oh, what is that I hear? Is it the taste of a breaking story? Hey! You can't hear a taste! And what are you doing here, Charlotte? Oh, don't remind me. I invited an eyewitness to a case to eat here, and I was planning to get some great material out of him. But he didn't even show up! Ah, calm down, calm down. This is nothing new. As a journalist, you should be used to this by now. As long as you can score some juicy tidbits from the Traveler, you might still be able to recover the cost of the meal. Uh, you know we can still hear you, Charlotte. <laughs> uh, never mind, it's nothing. I just heard you mention the Fortress of Meripede. You didn't commit a crime, did you? Please tell me all about it. No way! We would never! We're just going there to... Uh... Oh no, Paimon almost forgot that Nervalet told us to keep it a secret! You're being arrested for that? Oh. But now that I think about it, I suppose that's not completely unreasonable. That's pretty despicable. Almost as offensive as committing theft. Oh. You mean Paimon really did something that serious? Sorry, Paimon really messed up. Uh, in that case, it's nothing particularly newsworthy after all. Oh, how disappointing. Oh, right. There's still a chance. Uh, since you're going to be at the Fortress of Meripede, would you be willing to help me gather some material for a story? Um, about that, uh... No, it's nothing difficult. All you have to do is think of a way to get some time face-to-face -face with the Warden of the Fortress. He was awarded the honorary title of Duke in Fontaine. Sounds really cool, huh? Only those who have made significant contributions to the nation have been conferred this title. It's incredibly rare. On top of that, the Fortress of Meripede has never been under the jurisdiction of the courts. Practically nobody, including journalists like me, knows anything about the person in charge there. Oh, if I could write an exclusive article about him, I bet it would sell a boatload of papers. You make it sound easy, but it really depends. Of course. I wouldn't ask you to do it for free. So this meal is on me. All right, you got it, 
idea. We'll do anything you want. <laughs> then it's settled. The food should be here any second, right? Huh? Wait, just how much did you order? You have come, just as promised. Yes, this is the one and only entrance to the fortress of Meripede from Erinaeus. Careful, you may want to step back a bit. Oh, so you have to go down from here? Is the Utilizing both the barrier of the water as well as the fear humans have of the depths, the fortress of Meripede is naturally the perfect place to confine and guard criminals. But do not worry, it is not nearly as frightening inside as you may think. You will see for yourselves once you are down there. Uh, Paimon hopes you're right. Don't know about you, but just thinking about being at the bottom of the sea like that gives Paimon the heebie-jeebies. Oh, and there's one more thing. I mentioned that I have had personal dealings with the administrator of the fortress, Rithesley. He's a very shrewd fellow. Yeah, we heard about him too. He's that Duke, right? Correct. He is the highest-ranking manager of the underwater prison. Even though you are going there to investigate at my behest, it would behoove you to avoid any confrontation with him or any of his subordinates. The Duke rarely ever leaves the Fortress of Meripede, but that does not mean he is not privy to all that is happening inside and outside the Fortress. He is quiet, but not unaware, so please bear that in mind. All right, that's about all the time that we have to talk privately. I'm counting on you two. Don't worry, we won't let you down. Good. <clears throat> Madeline! I'm here, Monsieur Nervalet. These two are the newest convicts, I presume? <laughs> Don't worry, they won't escape on my watch. <laughs> like we would try. Please follow me, you two. I'll process your paperwork for entering the Fortress of Meripede. <laughs>
ladder now? Huh. So this is what it feels like to be a criminal in Fontaine. You two seem to be taking this pretty well. <laughs> it's rare to see convicts in such a good mood. they make you make the trip down here today? Monsieur Nervalet personally requested I escort these two convicts. I suppose he was concerned others might not be up to the task. <laughs> well now, aren't you the lucky one? Must be nice to be on good terms with the big shots like the Chief Justice. The only people I get to see every day are the new inmates. Well, have you tried service with a smile? Who knows, it might help your professional reputation. <laughs> Yeah, right. As if. Every criminal comes through here looking miserable. How can I smile with such a toxic work environment? And even if I did smile at them, the convicts would probably just think that I'm some freak getting some kind of twisted enjoyment from their pain. Oh, she's got a point. Well, I've finished transferring you. You two will register here, and Moret will guide you through the remaining procedures. <sighs> yep. I'll take it from here. You head on back to that bright and sunny world above. Okay, let me see. You are the Traveler and Paimon, correct? That would be us! Let me confirm your charges and sentence. Let's see. You two are charged with eating a cake specially prepared for the Archon by a Snezhnayan envoy without the Archon's permission, thereby incapacitating the political center of Fontaine for a brief period. Sentence... 45 days? Huh? L wait... You mean the cake that Nervala gave us was... Just looking at the charges, it seems you two are capable of causing some serious trouble. And considering how fond Lady Furina is of sweets, this crime is tantamount to trying to assassinate the Hydro Archon herself. Now I've seen everything. <laughs> anyway, we still need to finish processing you before you can enter the Fortress of Meripede. Please stand in front of the board over there. I'll take your mugshots with my camera. Oh, alright! But be sure to catch Paimon's good side. And we're done. Thank you for your cooperation. Next, someone will be along to guide you inside the fortress. Please be sure to cherish this opportunity for rebirth. Huh? Rebirth? Isn't that a little much? We're only gonna be here for 45 days! You two are the new inmates, right? Follow me. Oh, okay! Paimon is Paimon and this is the Traveler! Save it. Not like I'll remember your names. Move it.
Are you one of the guards here? Um, is there anything we should be careful of while we're here? Uh, did Paimon already ask something she wasn't supposed to? Why should I tell you anything? What's in it for me? <sighs> this is exactly why I can't stand new fish. I wouldn't even be doing this if it weren't for the credit coupons. Credit coupons? Alright, seeing as you're not the annoying kind that's getting dragged in here crying and blubbering, I guess I can tell you a few things. But next time, it'll cost you some coupons. Mora means nothing here. Here, we use credit coupons. Coupons can get you almost anything in the Fortress of Meripede. Desires? Fulfilled. You want power? No problem. Coupons can even change fate itself. So, credit coupons are a currency that can only be used here? It's not as simple as that. Like Moret said, everyone gets a chance at rebirth. No matter how much money or power you had before, it means nothing once you set foot inside the Fortress of Meripede. You have to start over and earn your coupons. Everyone starts from the same place, and you have a chance at a new, less terrible life. I guess that's the real purpose of the coupons. They symbolize true fairness and true justice. And this is also exactly why so many criminals choose not to return to the outside world even after they've served their sentence. Oh, so that's what the Fortress of Meripede is like. Huh, Paimo was under the impression that it'd be more like a prison. It certainly ain't all sunshine and roses here, but it's also not the worst place to be. You'd better take a good look at the scenery now. It'll be the last chance you get for a while. After being away from the sunlight for so long, even the terrifying depths of the sea start to feel like home. It just stops feeling oppressive, you know? Oh, I'm actually an inmate like you two. Welcoming newcomers is a job I've picked up to earn some extra coupons. Uh, why aren't you answering us again? I've told you enough for free. Any more info is gonna cost ya. So all you care about is Mora! Wait, no. Coupons? Almost there. It's down through here. Your turn to give it a try. like a metaphor for your previous life, isn't it? Uh, our lives weren't that bad! It's an enduring aftertaste. In Inazuma, the water possesses a depth of flavor unlike any other. Sumeru's water, meanwhile, has a rich and complex flavor profile, but it must be savored patiently to fully appreciate it. Entrance to the Fortress of Meripede? Huh. It looks like there are other new arrivals, too. 
Oh, they sure don't look happy. Uh, maybe we look too relaxed for fresh convicts. Oh, right. We're on someone else's territory now. Uh, if we're discovered, even Nervalette might not be able to rescue us. Hey! Don't scare Paimon! Oh, Paimon's not ready for all this! Uh, look, I don't really know you, and I have no idea what kind of crime you committed, but... You wouldn't have happened to anger someone important, did you? Someone important? Hmm, Now's not the time to worry about that. Anyway, it's over there, so... You just go on over there by yourselves. I've done my job, so... Good luck. What was that all about? Uh, wait a second. Are there usually so many garter backs around here? Prisoners numbers 7459 and 7560. Welcome. Oh, no need to be anxious. These Gardamex aren't here to attack you. In fact, they're here as your honor guard. When I heard that you were friends of Monsieur Nervillette, I had the Gardamex come and wait in formation. Wait! You know about our connection with Nervillette? The seafloor isn't as cut off from the world as you might imagine. However, I'm afraid that I know nothing more than that you are friends of the Udex. And, as you can see, committing a crime means being sentenced here. Even if you're friends with the Chief Justice. Quite fair. The, the Duke! Uh, greetings, Your Grace! L lovely weather today, isn't it? Oh, greetings, my good fellow. Well, I'm willing to imagine that the weather is as good outside the sea as you say it is. <laughs> ah, how great it would have been if only the Fortress of Meripede had been built on the coast, huh? It would have been so convenient to enjoy a nice chat in the sunshine. Ah, my profuse apologies. I just got so nervous when I saw you, I just... So this is the Duke. He sure looks a lot younger than Paimon imagined. The Traveler and Paimon, correct? Mr. Deacon here was responsible for your welcome. I trust you were satisfied with his guidance? Ah, I see. In that case, I regret to announce that Deacon here has just missed the best opportunity in his prison career to be promoted. I, uh, I admit that I was only thinking about the coupons. I'm sorry to have disappointed you, Your Grace. I originally... I once hoped for a chance to do some higher level work. I had no idea you two were big shots who were worthy of speaking with His Grace. Losing out on such a big opportunity because I couldn't see past my own nose. Plenty of time ahead, Deacon. There'll be more opportunities. Well, I believe that concludes the introductions. We've already taken enough time here. Deacon, if you would. Yes, Your Grace. I'll take my leave now. Please, follow me. To make you feel more welcome, I'll show you around the various facilities of the Fortress of Meripede. I hope it'll help you adjust to life here. He's going to personally give us a cure? Huh. Paimon can't figure out what this guy's thinking at all. No wonder Charlotte's so interested in him. He's one of those mysterious types. Alright, let's keep up with him. There's no need to be so reserved. The label of criminal is nothing but one of many identities. And being criminally inclined here at the fortress is just one of many ways to survive. Uh, is it really okay for the warden to think like that? We're real criminals, you know. What if we're too difficult to handle? <laughs> well, then maybe you'll be able to carve out a name and a place for yourselves in this underwater world, hmm? But... Before you go in swinging, please remember that in the Fortress of Meripede, it's better to not cause trouble for yourself, or for the guards. Now, we've arrived at a very important place. 
the Coupon Cafeteria. You can come here and claim one welfare meal each day. Welfare meal? You mean it doesn't cost anything? That's right. Criminals are essential to fortress operations, so we must guarantee that they at least have the basic means to survive. <laughs> but that's not how it was. Back in the day, it cost your reward coupons just to get a cup of water here. For fish like you who just arrived with nothing, you have to go to work hungry until you earned enough coupons to eat. It was only after His Grace became the administrator that we got the free meal rule. Now everyone gets a square meal every day, even no good slackers who've never picked up a wrench in their whole lives. Nobody starves to death here. In the Fortress of Meripede, credit coupons are the only currency, and everything must be purchased. In some sense, you could say using the coupons is a form of trade. But trade is always conducted by people. So if we want trade here to prosper, we need everyone to work hard and live their lives. If nobody could even afford a meal, then the whole fortress would be up in arms. And that would only make things more difficult for me. So, rather than saying that we're giving everyone a free meal here, you should say that everyone's hard work has improved the living conditions in the Fortress of Meripede. Your Grace's reasoning is correct, but what I said is also true. Whatever the case, hard work is rewarded here. You'd be hard-pressed to find anywhere else as fair and reasonable. Right! Paimon sees your point. By that logic, this place doesn't seem so bad after all! Oh, wait, no. We shouldn't drop our guard so quickly. But it seems the inmates really respect the Duke because of his attitude, right? Hmm. We should still try to verify the truth with our own eyes. Uh, let's continue this way. This place is known as the Pancration Ring. Sometimes we have criminals who have more energy than they know what to do with. Their daily work alone isn't enough of an outlet for them. So, instead of leaving them to their own devices, we've provided them with this dedicated venue. This way, nobody will get involved unless they want to be. Pancration matches? And you can earn extra coupons? Oh, what do you think, Traveler? Interested? But I must warn you that your sentence will be extended if you fail to restrain yourself and end up seriously injuring or killing your opponent. So, did you set this place up too? No, actually. I just granted approval for the organizer to use this area to build the ring, and I collect a portion of the proceeds in return. Of course, the fees are also quite useful. Oh. You mind if we ask what they're used for? Sure. Ensuring personal safety, maintaining the arena, and resolving any conflicts that arise. Why? Are you interested in how to manage a pancration ring? Oh, no, no. I'm always just wondering if that's how you paid for everyone's welfare meals. A reasonable guess. I see you have a talent for entrepreneurship. Oh, you hear that? Paimon has a talent! So we can start a business here? That is something you can discuss between yourselves later. Let's move on for now.
Uh, your, your grace. Good morning. I mean, good afternoon. No, wait, what time is it again? What time indeed. Time waits for no one, so it's best to keep an eye on it. Ah, uh, my, my apologies, your grace. Jeez, that guy's so nervous he almost forgot to breathe. <sighs> Sorry, forgive my manners. These are the dormitories, which is where inmates sleep. The guards will inform you where your bunk is later. In the Fortress of Meripede, criminals usually spend most of their time in either the production zone or the sleeping areas. The production zone? What does it produce? Is that where we'll be working? Not necessarily. Though working in the production zone is the most reliable way to earn credit coupons. If you have other skills, you can skip your shifts to earn them in other ways. Wow. Wait, you're the manager of this place and you're just telling us to our faces that it's okay to skip work? The fact that the Fortress of Meripede has continued operating completely autonomously is proof enough that most people are willing to work honestly and earn a stable income. As for what we produce, many of the clockwork machines seen all over Fontaine originate from our workshop. Therefore, the Fortress of Meripede is not only a place where criminals serve their sentences, but also a giant machine factory. There's no need for me to get into specifics about the production process now. You'll experience it all firsthand when you report for work tomorrow. <laughs> Let's move on. The tour continues over this way. scared me there. I didn't expect to see you here, uh, your grace. <laughs> I thought maybe I was so tired from work that I was starting to see things. The only thing you should be seeing is the work in front of you. Stay focused and keep up the pace. Oh, is some... Uh, <laughs> it's nothing. Paimon's just worried about how hard we'll have to work tomorrow. <laughs> Time like this. Oh, oh no, you didn't injure yourself, did you? Not yet, unfortunately for you. But thank you for your concern, Siege Wing. Oh. <laughs> then you must be here for those two. Allow me to introduce you. This is the infirmary, and Siege Wing here is the Fortress of Meripede's head nurse. <laughs> Hello, new faces. They call me the head nurse, but I actually handle all the nurse related work all by myself down here. Since you seem to have some rare downtime with no patience, perhaps you could find the time to join us for dinner? Oh, then these two must be some important convicts. <laughs> sure, I'll join the welcome party. Thank you. Your presence will be the pièce de résistance for today's tour. Oh, so the tour part is over now? I believe I've already covered the primary aspects of life here in the fortress. As for your work, there'll be someone else to guide you through the details. Hmm. Is there anything else? I seldom conduct tours, so why don't you just ask if you have any questions? Uh, well, this is your first time here. Paimon's not sure what to ask. Then let's head back to the coupon cafeteria. Maybe a meal will help you think up some questions. You should at least try to be excited. Our free meals are actually pretty good here.
what do you think of the food? Does it meet your expectations? Wow! It looks delicious! No one had made it sound like living conditions in the Fortress of Meripede wasn't very good. Who would have guessed that criminals get to eat tasty food like this every day? Oh, isn't that the meal box that only super lucky people manage to draw? Seems like you two are quite fortunate. It actually has nothing to do with luck in this case. I had a word with Walsy, so you didn't have to draw lots like everyone else. Oh, you mean the meals are random? Yes, what you get to eat depends completely on your luck. You could say that it's a distasteful little game that Chef Walsy likes to play here in the cafeteria. I knew it! If criminals got to eat tasty food like this every meal, the crime rate in Fontaine would skyrocket for sure! Excuse me, did I hear you mention Nervulet just now? Oh, I've been wondering how he's doing. Is he busy with work? Has he been taking care of his health? He seems healthy no matter how you look at him. But he works so hard all the time, so it must be really tiring. It sounds like he hasn't changed a bit. Looks like you can stop worrying so much, Sejuin. Oh, that's good. But I still feel like it's been too long since I've heard any news about him. No news is good news. Maybe next time I've got something to discuss with him, I can invite you to accompany us. Hmm? But isn't the Fortress of Meropede independent from Fontaine's court system? What do you two have to discuss? Well, we provide all kinds of mechanical products for official use, and some essential goods have to be obtained from the overworld, so we naturally have to stay in touch about this and that. Monsieur Nivellet's character is unimpeachable. No matter the question, you can discuss it openly and freely with him. Talking with him feels quite effortless. In light of that, I am quite willing to go out of my way to show respect and accommodate him. In fact, right now, I'm treating you two as guests invited by Monsieur Nivellet. But unfortunately, I can only do so until the end of this meal. After this, you two will just be inmates here. You're very welcome. Well, your new life awaits. Are you finished eating? Then I recommend that you return to the dormitories and rest. You have work to do tomorrow. Perhaps you were hoping to ask for some special privileges? Sorry, you'll have to use credit coupons like everyone else. It's not as comfy here as you might imagine. Now that I've gotten a good look at you two, I think you're very cute. After all, heavy is the head that wears the cutesy crown. <laughs> I guess I just want to say, just take care of yourself and don't get hurt. Grab yourself a welfare meal.
the Traveler and Paimon, right? Listen up. As new inmates, the only thing you need to worry about is what to do and when to do it. Don't make any extra trouble for yourself. Your bunks are right over there. Follow me. <sighs> so this is where we'll be sleeping from now on. Oh, Paimon can't believe this! Oh, the days of staying home and reading detective stories are like a dream now. Uh, by the way, Traveler, we saw a lot of things worth investigating just now. Even though the Duke didn't say it too directly, judging from what he said at the end, it seems that he was only welcoming because we know Nouvellette. We are criminals, and Paimon did eat that cake. But we're actually here to help Nervalette. Hmm... Is it possible that he knows we're here on a mission? Or is Paimon overthinking things? Yeah, Paimon thinks so too. He probably knew why we came here from the very beginning and intentionally wanted to send us a message. Maybe something like... Hey, I have my eyes on you, so don't try anything funny! Yeah, you're right. It's not like we can go back to Nouvellet empty-handed and say, The dude looks scary, so we gave up! Uh, and besides, the Duke said that he was willing to go out of his way to show respect for Nouvellet, right? So, we at least need to try. But, Hyman hasn't gotten a clue where we should start our investigation! into him. Fortunately, based on his attitude, it looks like the Duke sees Linny as just another inmate. We worked so hard to help clear Linny and Lynette's names, and yet we turn around and BAM! He's in prison anyway! Oh, right! Linny and Lynette are from the House of the Hearth. They work for the Knaves, so they could be here to investigate too! Huh? Oh, it's a card! Paimon didn't notice it earlier. Hmm... It looks like a magician's prop. Lenny must have left it here. He's in prison and still doing his little tricks, huh? Let Paimon have a look. It was nice to bump into you again. Let's catch up in the production zone tomorrow. What in the world? It's really like he's greeting a buddy on the street. Paimon thought he'd write something important. If you say so, we can ask him what's going on tomorrow. Let's get some rest now. Hey, you're finally awake! Well, it's Paimon's first day as a prisoner. Last night, Paimon dreamed about getting interrogated by the guards until Paimon told them everything and then Paimon woke up. Hey, come on! It's just a dream, okay? Paimon wouldn't really squeal. Maybe? Hey, lazy bones! What are you still doing here? If you don't want to starve, then get yourselves over to the production zone.
You must be the catch of the day. Looks like you've got some luck getting assigned this space. Yep, we just arrived yesterday and... Don't interrupt me when I'm speaking! Yes, sir. Listen carefully to my instructions. I don't want any mishaps. Every machine here is worth more than the both of you. Working around these machines can be very dangerous. Do your job well, and you can eat in the cafeteria after your shift. Get sloppy and you dine in the infirmary. Anyway, the Fortress of Merope doesn't want to lose a single one of its machines. And it also doesn't want to waste the production potential of any inmate. You got that? Got it! Your job is to use the machine over there to process widgets. Watch carefully, and make sure you step on the pedal at the right time. If the machine gets jammed, then give it a little maintenance with your fist. Here, take this. Bring me the process widgets, and I'll give you some credit coupons in exchange. This one is... tolerable. Though, since the processing is done by machine, the product is all pretty much the same anyway. Alright, I'll pass you for now. And we'll count up how many credit coupons you've earned. <sighs> I'm exhausted. We're done now, right? Oh, that foreman. He's so scary that Paimon couldn't even speak. Ugh. Even though Paimon's starving and wants to head straight to the coupon cafeteria, we still need to meet Lenny first, right? He probably just finished up his work, too. He should be around here somewhere. Lenny? Mr. Magician? Uh, where are you? Oh, this would better not be some disappearing act. Hmm... He doesn't seem to be around here. Let's try looking somewhere else.
Hey, over here. Ah! Oh, you scared Paimon! How'd you appear out of nowhere like that? Oh, you scare so easily now? Is there something worrying you these days? You little... The only thing we're worried about was trying to find you. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Come over here and keep it down. Oh, Lynette! You're here too! You two really are inseparable. That's right. My brother simply can't stand to be away from me. Uh, it's not just Lynette. Fremenet is also here. Do you still remember him? Oh, you mean that diver from the House of the Hearth, right? Pyro remembers seeing him in the Court of Fontaine before. Now hurry up and tell us, how did you end up as criminals this time? We fought so hard at court to prove you were innocent, but now it looks like our incredible court battle was for nothing! Sadly, even the teeniest of things can land you in prison these days. I put together a street performance and used the popularity we gained from the Opera House incident to attract a big crowd. And then? Next, I invited several audience members to participate in the show. And then, with the entire audience watching, their wallet suddenly disappeared. My brother was charged with theft, and I was charged as his accomplice, having assisted him in his crime. It really isn't that bad. The missing wallets are all in the leftmost drawer of the Maison Guardianage's big filing cabinet. We just need to see how long it takes to discover them. Yep, we should be released then. In terms of the magic trick itself, I think the performance went perfectly. <sighs> Leave it to Lenny to magic himself into prison. Indeed. Last time I hid my identity from you, I promised that I'd tell you absolutely everything if you were angry about it. No more secrets. So I don't plan on keeping anything from you this time either. At the moment, the House of the Hearth's interests don't conflict with yours at all. We were instructed by the father of our house, the Knave, to come here and conduct an investigation. <gasps> Told you so! See? Paimon guessed right! As for what we're investigating, Perhaps you haven't heard, but the Fortress of Meropede hides a secret. Some even say that the entire fortress exists just to protect it. The House of the Hearth has been investigating this for a very long time, trying to uncover its mysteries. But recently, all of our informants, including the ones that had infiltrated the guards, suddenly vanished and have not been heard from since. We believe that this is a direct provocation, and it's the reason why we came here. Father has somehow managed to confirm that Fossilors does not have Fontaine's Gnosis. Huh? How did she manage to learn information that important? Father has her ways. Many of them are beyond our imagination, and we've never had the chance to see her at work. But we trust her conclusions. It was this information that led us to suspect that Fontaine's Gnosis might be in the Fortress of Meripede and is related to that secret. So it's all about the Gnosis again. Well, that's about it from our side. How about you two? Did Monsieur Nervulet send you here? Bingo! The Nave has been applying a lot of pressure. She wants to know what happened to Child, so we came here to investigate. Uh, Traveler, are we allowed to tell them? <laughs> you don't need to worry too much about that. She's just asking for a report on Master Child's predicament as a means of pressuring you. Father used this situation as a pretext to negotiate with two high-ranking officials in the Court of Fontaine. She actually just wants to be able to make concessions on this matter for gains elsewhere, almost like a bargaining chip. Sometimes you need an excuse to do things you otherwise couldn't. And a harbinger is more valuable than you might imagine. Of course, it's not a complete farce. If we do manage to find out what happened to Master Child too, then diplomatic relations with Fontaine could improve, and Snezhnaya might even be able to adjust its stance a bit. Is it just Paimon, or does it feel like we're the only ones who actually care about Child's situation? The relationship between the Harbingers must be as bad as ever. I wouldn't go that far. 
Father just has different standards than we do when it comes to what can be sacrificed for an advantage. Uh, by the way, I have a suggestion. Why don't we team up? Even though we have different objectives, we're both here to investigate the Fortress of Meripede. It would be more efficient for us to work together. As you know, the House of the Hearth has many reasons to seek the Gnosis, but our highest priority remains resolving the prophesied crisis. You can trust us on that. Mm, see, I told you. Is that so? Hmm. Sure enough, it won't be easy to convince them to cooperate with us. Lenny seems to be thinking pretty hard about something. Of course he is. Lenny has been looking forward to a chance to reach an understanding with you ever since last we met. Or, I should say, we were really looking forward to teaming up with you this time. Lynette, just tell them everything, why don't you? It's okay to open up a little. <laughs> Very prudent of you, and consistent with your behavior since we first met. That's reasonable enough, and I agreed to cooperate on these terms as well. I was prepared for the worst, but you were actually more agreeable than I anticipated. Since Lynette and I arrived here, our investigation uncovered the fact that the Fortress of Meripede has a forbidden zone. Most people just clammed up and wouldn't talk, but after asking the right questions, we were able to confirm the existence of the Forbidden Zone from the guards. You should be aware of that while you're investigating. A Forbidden Zone? Oh, could that be where the child disappeared to? You're right, we'll definitely keep that in mind. Good. That's the most suspicious thing about the fortress that we know of so far. We have a few other unanswered questions, and we'll be investigating those as quickly as we can. Anyway, I hope you find our information useful at least. Oh, look at the time. You two must be hungry. You should go to the coupon cafeteria and get something to eat. I'll use my cards to get in touch with you again in the future. Oh, that's just what Paimon wanted to hear! Paimon's starving after all that work today. We can talk more about the investigation later. Let's go get some grub! about it then. We'll just deal with the regular food for the time being. Let's just get out of here as soon as possible. But 
Life here doesn't seem all that bad. Other than the foreman being kind of mean and the work being pretty tiring. You think so, mate? <laughs> if I had a coupon for every fish who said that. Seems you fishies still haven't learned your lessons from your life up on the surface. If you take things at face value, then by the time you reach a dead end, you won't even know how you ended up on that road in the first place. <laughs> I like your attitude. I can, uh, let you in on a little something. Everyone's been telling you to just follow the rules and not cause any trouble for yourself. Am I right? But what they don't tell you is that the rules aren't exactly what they pretend to be. The rules for being a prisoner. The truth is, this place has a lot of hidden rules. Huh? Hidden rules? What do you mean? Not everyone knows about those rules, but whether you know them or not, once you break one, you might encounter something even worse than death. Really? Oh, now you're really scaring poor Paimon. Don't joke around like that. Of course. And I'd say that just disappearing would be one of the better outcomes. Oh, you mean that if there really are hidden rules, then child's disappearance might have something to do with that? Uh, in that case, would you tell us some hidden rules? We definitely want to avoid breaking them. <laughs> Come on, mate. This is valuable information. The difference between life and death. Do you really think you can just ask and- Paimon understands, but we don't have many credit coupons yet. Yeah, yeah, I know. Not like I'm going anywhere. Just come talk to me after you've saved enough. Moreover, your new fish, freshly caught and completely out of your element. What'd be the point in even telling you anything? before you've gotten a handle on your new lives. Come and find me once you've been here longer. I'm usually around the rag and bone shop. Just call me V-Doc. Bye bye now. He left, just like that. Huh. Do you think he's just trying to scare us into buying fake information from him? Yeah, it might be a good place to start in our investigation. Hidden rules, huh? But, like he said, we don't have any coupons and we're still not familiar with this place. Oh, there's nothing we can do about it now. Ah! We were so busy talking, we almost forgot to eat. Even if it's not the best, it's probably better while it's warm. Come on, dig in before it gets cold.
we mercs have one simple rule. Whoever pays the most is your new boss. make a tidy sum selling some of this. that our shift is set for every morning, and we're free to do whatever we want all afternoon. But it seems like most of the other inmates choose to continue working through the afternoon to earn more credit coupons. Oh, and they also said that you can use coupons to skip work in the morning and free up your time. They weren't kidding. Credit coupons really can be used to do anything here. Ah, Paimon's so tired. And we'll need to wake up and go to work in the morning. Without any credit coupons, it's not like we can really do anything else. Hmm. Nighty night, Traveler. Paimon hopes we can keep making progress on our investigation tomorrow. Unless... 
It wasn't an ordinary dream? Oh, <gasps> child's vision! So you had it with you this whole time? Maybe the vision connected child's consciousness to yours! And our investigation has its first major breakthrough! Good thing you brought the vision with you here. So what did you see in the dream? Do you know where child went? Huh. Okay. Well, hopefully it'll be a bit more helpful in the future. What's more important now is that it's the start of another new day as prisoners! Let's do our best to earn more credit coupons! What's the plan for today? Let's go! It's time to start working. If that guard Fielding catches us skulking about, he's sure to give us an earful. <laughs> Look who decided to show up! Get your butts in gear and get to work! Time's a wasted. Good, here you go. Remember to give me the widget once you've finished processing it. Hello, shift mates. I saw you finished your work, so I thought I'd come over and say hi. Oh, hey there! We've seen you before. Your assigned workspace is really close, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. The name's Rowan. This past few days, I couldn't help but notice the new faces working nearby. I guess we were destined to meet. I've been working here for almost 15 years. Even the foreman, Grainville, always calls me Chief. Whoa, you've been working here a long time, Chief. <laughs> if there's anything you'd like to know, just ask me. I know the work here in the production zone better than the back of my hand. All right, Chief. We'll be sure to come to you first. <laughs> Did you just ask about the rules? <laughs> Pretty sharp for newcomers. You've already heard about the rules, huh? Who'd you hear it from? Hmm. All right. Seeing as I'm the one who came over here, you're already calling me Chief. I guess I can tell you a little. Truth is, you two keep working like this, you might be putting yourselves in danger. Huh? Wait, there's even a rule about that? What would have happened if you never told us about this? Well, it's usually not that easy to break one on accident. The conditions of the hidden rules are usually pretty specific. But once you do break one, bad things happen. If you work continuously in the production zone for three days, and if all you do besides eating and sleeping is just work, then something bad will happen during lunch on the third day. Huh? Like what? Oh, don't scare Paimon! <laughs> if I knew that, then I wouldn't be standing here talking to you, now would I? You mean, even you have never tried working three days like that before? There's actually a legend about this rule. They say that there was a worker who worked way harder than me. He was both efficient and eager on the job, and most other workers couldn't hold a candle to him. One time, he tried to test his limits and worked as long as he could. Then during lunch on the third day, he disappeared into thin air, as if he'd evaporated. Later, some people went and asked some of his past friends about him, but they said, never heard of the guy. Unfortunately, we were assigned different production zones. I never saw for myself what he looked like. 
Wait, are you thinking that it was... Oh? You... Uh, listen, kid. This ain't the kind of thing you should be curious about. Let me tell you, you're better off forgetting about it and looking after yourself. Now I kind of regret ever telling you. Yeah, I agree with Chief here. Do you really want... <sighs> Alright, if you insist. Ooh, it looks disgusting! Oh, Paima misses your cooking now. What would you like to do this afternoon? Right, we just need... Look who decided to show up! Get your butts in gear and get to work! Time's a-wasted! Good, here you go! Remember to give me the widget once you've finished processing it. Let me have a look. Hmm, not bad. Right, here's your credit coupons. Ah, we woke up so early today that Paimon's been nodding off all afternoon. Good thing it's finally time for bed. Life as convicts. Uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? What do you have planned for us? Look who decided to show up! Get your butts in gear and get to work! Time's away- Oh? What's with suddenly wanting to work so hard? You need coupons that badly? Sh sure! Let's just say we really want to test our limits. Nice! We did well today! Let's keep it up! It. Paimon doesn't even have the energy to talk anymore. Is it oh, 
Oh, I'm not exhausted. It's just work, work, and more work. Paimon's little body can't handle this much longer. <gasps> Wait a sec. Now that Paimon thinks about it, haven't we been working non-stop for three days now? Oh, Paimon feels a shiver going down her spine. What's going to happen? But it doesn't seem like anything's changed at all. And we made it to the coupon cafeteria safely. Are the so-called hidden rules only a rumor after all? Well... There's no use to just guessing all day. Paimon's stomach has been grumbling the whole time. Let's just eat already! Paimon wonders what we'll get today! Maybe we'll get the super lucky meal! Wait! What? What in the world is this? Is this stuff... meat? But it looks and feels so bizarre! What do you think is going on? Is this the bad thing that Rowan was talking about? No, stop right there. Paimon gets what you mean, just don't say it. Hey, isn't that Woolsey over there? He must have made the food, right? So let's just ask him about the food and be done with it. Hey, Woolsey, have a moment? Hmm? What is it? I'm about to go report the numbers for today's free meal, so you'd better make it quick. Uh, it's about the meat in our meals. Look, does it seem... normal to you? The meat? Oh, that. Looks perfectly fine to me. Totally normal. You better hurry up and chow down. Uh, how could this be fine? Hey, don't leave! You barely even look at it! Hey! Ugh, what should we do now? Wolsey wouldn't even give us the time of day. Yeah, looks like we have no other choice. Paima was positively famished a minute ago, but now she's lost her appetite. What would you like to do this afternoon? Okay, let's see if we can find any new leads. Oh, he hello. You two are the ones who were with His Grace. No need to be so nervous. Sorry, I couldn't help but think of His Grace once I saw you, and I... Oh, it's hard to say. 
Maybe I am. He's got a very overwhelming presence. It makes me feel like I'm just some insignificant little bug. Wait, seriously? Oh, I'm always indecisive, and I tend to make a mess of things. It's like a reflex. I just instantly start to tense up the moment I see a smart and capable person like His Grace. What? P please, don't say anything like that out loud. How could you possibly think something like that? The desert's a tough adversary, but at least it doesn't hide anything. What you see is what you get, and whether you take on the challenge is entirely up to you. Mercs have one simple rule. Whoever pays the most is your new boss. The desert's a tough adversary, but at least it doesn't hide anything. What you see is what you get, and whether you take on the challenge is entirely up to you.
my people are used to the desert life, but still, I hope that one day they'll be able to find an oasis of their own and leave the sandstorms behind for a better life. The desert's a tough adversary, but at least it doesn't hide anything. What you see is what you get, and whether you take on the challenge is entirely up to you.
My people are used to the desert life, but still, I hope that one day they'll be able to find an oasis of their own and leave the sandstorms behind for a better life. We mercs have one simple rule. Whoever pays the most is your new boss. My people are used to the desert life, but still, I hope that one day they'll be able to find an oasis of their own and leave the sandstorms behind for a better life. We mercs have one simple rule. Whoever pays the most is your new boss. to look after in the infirmary. I thought I'd come here and enjoy the sight of everyone hard at work. Enjoy? Uh, what's there to enjoy here? It's really worth watching. I often stand here and observe everyone. Humans are just so interesting and adorable. I like to watch your expressions while you work. Uh, are you talking about pets or people? Oh, 
I can see why you think that, but you shouldn't jump to conclusions. See, we Melazines are a different species, and we see the world very differently from humans. It's very easy for me to observe everyone's condition. All it takes is one look, and I can tell which workers are exhausted. Wait, Melazines can see that? Huh, that does sound useful for being a nurse. <sighs> yes. Running around tending to everyone's health is very fulfilling. But I'd much prefer it if you're all happy and free from exhaustion and pain in the first place. Take care of your body and make sure you eat well. Always rest when you're tired from work and don't push yourself too hard. We'll definitely take care of ourselves. Thanks for the reminder. Hey, it's the Traveler and Paimon. <laughs> no need to tease me, okay? I won't trip on the same step twice. Just like His Grace said, paying attention to every little detail is the key to prosperity. Hmm, maybe this is the true meaning of rebirth, not just earning credit coupons. The desert's a tough adversary, but at least it doesn't hide anything. What you see is what you get, and whether you take on the challenge is entirely up to you. Oh, uh, I was injured a bit just now. Nothing major, I think I just pulled something. A little mishaps like this are unavoidable at work, you know? Huh. Paimon wouldn't have thought someone as experienced as the Chief would still get hurt on the job! I just knew you would say that. This is pretty embarrassing. Uh, where is Siegeween when you need her anyway? The one time I need to make a quick trip to the infirmary. Oh, 
You mean she wasn't in- Yeah. The rumors say that there's never anybody in the infirmary in the half hour before lunch. And nobody knows where Siege Wing gets off to. to her work, where else would she possibly go? <sighs> Forget it. I can take care of a small sprain like this on my own anyway. No need to trouble her. Wonderful. I was worried that you'd be busy trying to earn reward coupons all the time, but it seems like you haven't neglected your investigation work after all. Paima likes having more coupons, but no one wants to work all the time. Have you also been investigating the area, Lynette? No, I was just slacking off, and you happened to catch me. My brother is still obsessed with anything remotely related to the Forbidden Zone. But, knowing him, it won't be long before we get more leads. Oh, before I forget, this is for you. Huh? Credit coupons? Why are you giving us these? I've been here longer than you. Coupons aren't a resource in particularly short supply. What is in short supply are interesting people to talk with. Ah, that's so nice of you, Lynette. We'll be sure to make good use of these coupons then. Hey, look! There's something here! Hmm, looks like a research notebook. That suspicious guy peeking into the infirmary just now. Are they a fan of Sea Dream? He must have dropped this. Let Paimon read it real quick! The Melusia perceive the world very differently from humans. There are significant deviations. As a result, their sense of aesthetics and beauty is also very different from that of humans. This must be taken into consideration when giving gifts. Ooh, this all sounds pretty serious. He sure did his homework. And as for the notebook, let's take it. Has hit a dead end. Well, 
We'll keep searching for more clues tomorrow. Good night, traveler. Oh, Paimon doesn't want to get up. Paimon still feels completely exhausted from yesterday. What do you have planned for us? After working here so long, we're really starting to get the hang of it. But doing the same thing all the time can get old pretty quickly. How? Yeah, it's good. now. What would you like to do this afternoon? Knowing child, he must have been there all the time. Oh, you must be the Traveler, huh? Sorry, mate, but uh, competitors as strong as you are prohibited from participating. I don't make the rules, mind you, but I was given very specific instructions. Even convicts value their lives, don't they? I hope you can understand. <laughs> but we have a game here that'll let you show off your strength, and you'll even earn some credit coupons in the process. What do you think? Interested? game, will it cost us credit coupons? Of course. That's the cruel reality facing every competitor in a place like the Pancration Ring. Okay, great. Let me walk you through the rules. The targets in front of you will pop up one after another. You'll need to hit the targets in the same order that they popped up. If you can complete a few rounds in a row with no mistakes, then you'll win credit coupons. But the second you mess up the order, you'll lose. Game over. The game costs 300 credit coupons to have it go. So, you up for- Thanks for your patronage, mate. Now, let the game begin. Okay, do your best to hit the targets, just like Colin said!
your strength really shouldn't be underestimated. Now I get why you're prohibited from participating in any official fights. Nobody who values their life would be willing to get in the ring with you. However, you two haven't tried betting on the outcome of a Pancration match yet, have you? Just go talk to Rusimov. Buy a ticket for whichever fighter you think will win. There's a big payout if the fighter you support comes out on top. But we don't know anything about the fighters. How can we possibly know who to support? That's normal. Just watch a few matches and get a feel for the fighters. It won't be long before you can pick winners in your sleep. He's got a point. Why don't we give it a try? If we have enough coupons, we could probably bet at random until we figure everything out. <laughs> bet at random, huh? Uh, well, how should I put it? Uh, it's not like you can't do that, but I'd advise you to give it some more thought first. Huh? We shouldn't get too carried away. What's the problem? What? I... Never even picked a boxer before, and you already know about the rules? You're not just strong fighters. Seems you're pretty perceptive, too. Uh, might as well tell you about it, since you already know that much. Plus, I think you've got the potential to be one of my greatest customers. I think I can let you in a bit. Besides, I don't want to risk ever losing a customer like you. Uh, is it that serious? Okay. The hidden rule here is, if you buy both boxers' tickets and support them both, something bad will happen the next morning. So the rule is that we shouldn't pick both boxers in the same fight, but if anyone actually did that, wouldn't they be guaranteed to lose coupons? Who would do that anyway? And what do you mean by something bad will happen? How would I know? Not like I'm stupid enough to do that. But I've heard a story about the rule. According to the rumor, there was a masked boxer who possessed incredible skill and power. None of his opponents even stood a chance against him. However, in the final match, the organizers told him to take off his mask. He refused and never showed up to the fight. And after that, he was never seen again. Some say he died, or that he was taken care of by the event's organizers. But everyone remembers that he was someone who cherished honor above all else. In his eyes, supporting both boxers in a match would dishonor the competition itself. So you mean, it's like, a curse? He'll take vengeance on any- No, he was always wearing a mask, like he was intentionally trying to hide his identity. I don't even know anything about his past. Traveler, do you think that boxer was- Huh? You're not serious. Are you? Look, here I was just trying to be nice and warn you, yet here you are trying to break it on purpose? Yeah, it sounds pretty scary to Paimon! Uh, seems you've made up your mind. Just be sure to protect Paimon, okay? Betting on both fighters will set you back about 3,000 credit coupons. If you have enough, then go ahead and give it a try. Just don't come running back to me if something happens. Seems we had a productive day. Hope we can make even more progress to... We're getting used to life as... What do you have planned for us? After working here so long, we're really starting to get the hang of it. But doing the same thing all the time can get old pretty quickly. How are you holding up? and relax once in a while.
just a regular meal set. Guess Paimon shouldn't get her hopes up. What would you like to do this afternoon? Maybe we'll be able to find some leads there. Hmm? Are you two here to buy tickets? Better be quick about it. Another match is about to start. Who are the boxers in the next ra We have the reigning champ, Le Grappler, versus a contender from the Eastern Prison Block, Demon Horde. Are those their nicknames, or did they choose those names themselves? Either way, super weird. Uh, since you're new around here, I'll help you out and give you a little suggestion. Even though Le Grappler is the crowd favorite, Demon Horde is a first-class dark horse with incredible potential. Anyway, for this match, I recommend... Huh? F uh, for both fighters? Uh, I could tell you're new to this, but I didn't think you were completely clueless. Maybe you don't quite understand the rules, no? Oh, no need, no need. Um, we're aware that we're going to lose coupons. All right, then, if you're absolutely sure. Yeah! We got it! Just shut- Aww, looks like we won't get a chance to sleep in as long as we're here. Let's get to bed early! Hey, Traveler. Paimon. Package here for you. The next time you buy something, go pick it up yourself. I'm not a delivery man, you know. Huh? A package? For us? Did you buy something, Traveler? <laughs> ah, Paimon's not quite awake yet, so why don't you go take a look? Alright! Yesterday we broke the hidden rule and bought tickets for both boxers! Oh, maybe this package is the bad thing that Colin said would happen. Huh? Paimon suddenly feels wide awake. Wait, maybe let Paimon go hide somewhere first. Just call Paimon after you opened it. Hey, wait, wait! Paimon's still here! Don't open it! Ah! Huh? What is it? Are you okay? Uh, let Paimon take a peek too. Oh, it's just a small bottle. But the color of the liquid inside looks so wrong. Almost like... Alright, that's enough of that. No need to say it out loud. Paimon already knows what you're trying to say. Ooh, no way. Get that stuff away from Paimon. Uh... We shouldn't open the bottle until we figured out what's going on. Just trust Paimon in this one, okay? What do you have planned for us? Though it feels nice to slack off a little, less work means less coupons. Let's make the most of our morning. <sighs> if there's no way to send it all out, then maybe I'll never get a chance to leave. Uh, who are you? We've never seen you before, and you don't look like a fellow convict. Uh, I I'm not! <sighs> of course I'm not. Please, don't mistake me for a criminal. I'm a good, law-abiding citizen. Then, 
what are you doing here? You sure seem anxious about something. I'm a promoter for Fontico, and I'm usually responsible for promoting our drink products. I thought I could complete my task here quickly and return to headquarters, but I've been here way longer than I anticipated. Oh, a promoter from Fontico? So what kind of problem did you run into? Ugh, I'm so upset. It's all because of that Duke. After discussing the company's promotional plans with him, he told me outright that my project was worthless. However, in light of our long history of successful collaboration, I still tried to patiently explain the details. However, to my surprise, he just cut me off while I was speaking. <clears throat> Let me take a moment and recall his exact words. I'm just gonna stop you there and say no. If anything, I'm saving you time. It seems you don't fully understand the value of credit coupons here, nor do you understand the value of your own products. The former is because you are from the overworld. That's understandable, and I don't blame you for that. But as for the latter, only someone monumentally stupid, so breathtakingly stupid that they were completely ignorant of the value of credit coupons, despite living in the underworld, would ever possibly consider buying your drink. Let's just forget it. <sighs> anyway... That's how he rejected my proposal and asked me to come up with another solution with the condition that it doesn't cause any trouble for him. Can you believe that guy? Uh, well, he is the head honcho here. Not much you can do about that. We met him too and could tell that he's the kind of guy that's hard to pin down. Fine, fine. I know, I should just let it go. I'm on his turf after all. His house, his rules. you crazy fools really did it. You bought tickets to support both fighters, didn't you? Well, I, did anything happen? Well, the next day we received a mysterious package, but we still haven't made any sense of the contents. So it is real. You didn't become cursed or anything like that, did you? Are, are you both still okay? Wait, are you sure that it's still you controlling your bodies right now? Uh, Paimon's not sure. What do you think, Traveler? Is Paimon still Paimon? Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Hmm. Yeah, you two don't seem to have changed at all. But I wouldn't let your guard down just yet. Still, I didn't expect you would actually do it. You'd actually throw away coupons like that just to satisfy your curiosity? Even if we bought tickets like everybody else, it's not like we could hope to earn any coupons. When it comes to things like this, it's always organizer who makes the real profit. Hey, just what are you trying to imply? The Pancration Ring is an honest business, and we really don't make much from selling tickets. We make so little that even the current tournaments can only be held thanks to funding from the producer of Fanta. Oh, so it's the company that manufactures Fanta sponsoring the events? I thought all of this was thanks to the Duke's support. Let's just say it's a mutually beneficial arrangement. They reached out to us first hoping to promote Fanta products in the Fortress of Meropede. Uh, anyway, you try and take extra good care of yourselves these next few days, you hear?
on it. Maybe it's some flyers from the company. Uh, okay. But if someone catches us, they... Oh, <laughs> you're right. Guess there's nothing to worry about then. Let Paimon have a look here. Without assistance from the Fontaine Research Institute, development of the new product has been slow, and some researchers on the project have voiced concerns. We have no choice but to let the new product undergo the first phase of promotional trials without a designated name or packaging. We will adjust the direction of future development according to feedback. We have decided to only conduct closed, small-scale trials for the time being. Sure doesn't seem like anything unusual. The company is just trying to develop some new products besides Fanta. But it sounds like things aren't going well at all. Uh... Let's put these papers back where we found them and make it look like nobody went through them. Okay, good. Time to show me what you got.
Vidoc over there? Huh. Is it just Paimon or are there fewer people than usual here today? Ah. Uh, seeing you at this time must mean you've already saved up a lot of credit coupons. Or at least enough to skip work. <laughs> Seems you're getting into the swing of things around here. Impressive. Very impressive. So, now can you tell us about the hidden rules you know? Hmm. If that's what you want to know, I guess you couldn't have come at a better time. Huh? What do you mean it's a good time? Leonid and those other pesky broke urchins have all gone to work in the production zone. I wouldn't want them listening in without paying up. We get it! Just tell us already! So, you know those pipes that make strange sounds? Don't ever, ever go near them at night. Even if you manage to avoid the guards, you might find something even more terrible there. Something even more terrible? Like what? A group of cannibals. Cannibals? In the Fortress of Meripede? Every month, they meet a few times in the dead of night. Rumor has it they might be connected to the people that have disappeared here. But what's even scarier is that they have a special proclivity. Since they have no way to dispose of the leftover remains, they have ways to transform them into other forms and keep them in the fortress forever. Know what you mean by other forms. So that's what's going on here. Oh, Paimon's stomach doesn't feel so good. <laughs> you two look pretty skeptical. No matter. Learning the truth behind dark secrets isn't necessarily a good thing. I've got things to do too. I suggest you just act like I never told you anything. situation. Huh. You know, Paimon does feel a little better about it now. <sighs> when will all the secrets end? Hmm. Vidok isn't here. But the guys who went to work in the morning are back. What? What are you saying? You shouldn't go around saying stuff like that. Always at your service. <laughs> Just stay away from me. What are you talking about? Listen, you should keep your nose out of other people's business. Hmm. Their attitude sure is suspicious. Like they're trying to avoid us. But if they're being so obvious about acting weirdly, do you think they might just be trying to lure us in? Oh, this is all getting way too creepy for Paimon. So you mean we still need to investigate some more? Okay, if you say so.
What do you want? Criminals like you ought to be working right now. Catch my drift. We just want to ask you a simple question. Have you ever discovered anything odd during your nighttime patrols? Why are you asking about something like that? Whatever happens at night isn't your concern. All you need to worry about is getting enough sleep. Uh... Well... Right! We've heard it happens a few times every month. Paimon has sensitive ears, so it makes it hard to sleep. Really? I see. Uh, but it's not like I'm on duty every night. And now that you mention it, I recall my colleagues talking about something like that before. They say that strange things tend to happen at night on pipe cleaning days. Lots of us don't willingly take those shifts. So, what happens at night on pipe cleaning days? And they just conduct regular cleaning of the fortress's drainage facilities. There are three pipe cleaning days per month, and it just so happens that today is one of the scheduled days. You can try to confirm the sounds tonight if you want, and if they're real, then I can report the issue to my superiors for you. Oh, okay. Then we'll keep both ears out tonight. Now, if that's all, then I'll be leaving now. I advise you not to try anything funny, though. Even if I'm not on duty tonight, someone will still be watching you. Don't worry, we don't want any time added to our sentences. <laughs> oh, he left. So what do you think about the pipe cleaning days he mentioned? Right, both are a possibility. But feel Paima knew you would say that. Alright, sounds like we'll be up all night tonight then. Paima just hopes the guards don't catch us.
Fine. This should be the place. What? I know you. You were the ones we saw. Huh. You've got guts showing up here. You know who we are, right? You'd better leave now. Ain't nobody coming here to save you. What'd you say? Yeah, so what if they were? If you push us, we can make those rumors a reality at any time. Hey, what's the point of all those rumors anyway? What exactly are you trying to do? I don't have to tell you anything. If you turn around, go back to the dormitories, and act like you never saw anything, then I'll pretend that you never showed up here. Yeah, scram. Nothing worth seeing here. Huh? What did you say? Isn't that exactly what Boss said when he left? Hey, do you know our boss? Whoa. We had no idea our boss was such a big deal. He always kept his identity a secret. So, did he have you come here to find us? Oh, so your child's crew here? Seems like he had no problem fitting in. We're the only ones who heard him say those words when he left that night. So, unless he somehow told you those exact same words after that... Hmm... All right. I guess that's proof enough for me. I believe you. Wow! Those dreams of yours sure come in handy! We gave him the business for a while, and would always give him a hard time when he first came to the Fortress of Maripede. But here in the Fortress, the strong will always earn respect. He was working the longest hours and racking up wins in the Pancration Ring. You could always see how amazing he was, even when he was teaching us a lesson. So eventually, we all decided to follow him. But one day, he suddenly told us that he had to find a way to escape this place, no matter the cost. He said it was because he heard that call again. And as his crew, if the boss wants something, then it's our job to get it done. So, we got to work, and used the hidden rules that were here to make up and spread the rumor about the cannibal rule. We just wanted to give him a better chance of escaping on a night after the pipes had been cleaned. Your rumor nobody would want to come anywhere near here, prisoner or guard. Wow, it sure is easy to exploit people's fear of the unknown. But has a child already escaped? Why are you all still coming here after pipe cleaning day? Because, as far as we know, the pipe he went into isn't actually an exit, it should be a dead end. It leads to an abandoned factory area, and even if there were a way to escape from there into the sea, we're still way too deep. No one could ever reach the surface alive. But Boss still insisted on going in. It's like he was obsessed about it. So we told him that we'd pretend as if he never existed while he was gone, and that if he wanted to come back, he should wait for night time on a pipe cleaning day. That way, we could meet him here and help cover the whole thing up. So you come and wait here through the night a few times a month just because of that promise? Yeah, but it's been so long now. We already know in our hearts that he must have managed to escape somehow. Uh, is it also possible that something unfortunate happened to him? Nothing could ever defeat Boss or slow him down. It's one thing we know for sure. Okay, okay. Paimon was just brainstorming possibility- Alright. Keep quiet and follow us. The way up from here has been sealed off. It's impossible to get through. Boss left by going down from here. It, uh, wasn't full of water at the time. Later, we came back, hoping to have a look. That's when we found out it had been completely flooded. It's impossible to navigate unless you're an extremely skilled diver. Do you think Child got trapped by the water? Not likely. We all know that Boss was an incredible swimmer. Really? Then have him come investigate, pronto. 
Just be sure to tell us if you get any news about Boss. It's getting late. We should leave before the guards come this way. Yeah, we learned a lot about what happened to Child here. Let's get going! We finally learned some key information! Seems all of our investigative work has finally started to pay off! When you said you knew a diver, you were talking about Fremine, right? If we ask Linny, he'll definitely have Fremine help us! Ugh... Why is Child like this? What was he doing going into the pipes? Not making our jobs easier, that's for sure! Fortunately, though, it seems like it's only a matter of time now before we find out what really happened. Now that we can finally relax, Paimon's starting to feel super sleepy. <sighs> Let's try to get some rest while we still can. Nighty night, Traveler! Ugh, it's morning already? Sleep. Huh? Wait, look over there! Isn't that... It's one of Linny's cards! Let Paimon see what's written on it! Maybe you haven't heard, but today is the monthly free day. Everyone has the day off today, which makes it the perfect time to do some investigating. It's been a while since we last talked. Have you been making any progress lately? Let's meet at our usual spot in the factory area before lunchtime. I have new information! Ooh, today's our lucky day! We have the day off! From the sound of it, Lenny's been making progress with his investigation. Wonder what he's discovered! Hmm... We still have some time before we meet up. Let's talk with the people here for a bit more before we go! Look! There are some people talking over there! Let's listen in on the conversation! If you ask me, those pompous parasites on the surface act like they're all a bunch of aristocrats. Do any of them give half a hoot about a bunch of dogs like us? Hey, speak for yourself, mate! I'm no dog! Oh, you think you're special or something? If you're here, then you're just a convict like the rest of us. I've heard that even if you're released after serving your sentence, going back to life on the surface ain't any better. Once a criminal, always a criminal. We're marked for life. Uh, I don't buy that. Hey, how cool would it be if the whole world was destroyed by a giant flood and everyone had to start over from nothing? What kind of filthy bilge water are you spewing? I have family up there. You best shut your sewer hole with talk like that. Listen, things ain't so great on the surface, but who says that you have to leave? I've heard that you can still stay here and work even after you've served your sentence. Not bad if you ask me. Who wants to live in the ruddy overworld anyway? <laughs> and what makes you think they'd want to hire someone like you? It's one of the great mysteries of the universe, how someone as useless as you is so confident. Whoa. Sounds like they're really unhappy about the overworld. Speaking of which, Paimon never heard anyone use the words overworld or underworld when we were living up there. Is it only something the inmates down here say? That's true. Over there. Let's go listen in. 
So I said, that's not a faucet. Hey, hey, who are you two? Why'd you come over all of a sudden? Oh, uh, sorry for eavesdropping. Sounds like you were talking about something private. Uh, what's the matter? <laughs> They're just looking to join in on our fun, that's all. Hey, don't pretend like it's okay for them to just interrupt us like that. Yeah, <sighs> fine. You're lucky we don't mind extroverts that much. <laughs> you hear that, Quisto? What nice! Your expressions tell me you're looking to hear some juicy info, am I right? <laughs> but before that, it just so happens that I know you two. Really? Are we that famous? You kidding? How often does anyone get a personal tour led by His Grace himself? Practically everyone was talking about it. Word has it that you also caused quite the kerfuffle. A little mistake, huh? I like the way you put it. You see, people with a good attitude can join our group anytime. Unlike some of the others here. Your group? I'm Cuisto, and this is Lavaroon. People usually call us the Bombshell Bros, but don't worry. We're not playing with bombs or anything. It's just that our information is always so explosive, and we blow minds on the regular. So, you two really like to gossip? You sure know how to embellish. No, no. You don't get it. Knowing intelligence will make things better for you here. For example, knowing who's working with whom, who has the latest rumors, who's not getting along. Wouldn't you like to know all that? Whoa, all this info's worth something, you know? You should prove you're worthy of it. I don't mind him. Quisto's always this way. Just play nice and say something to massage his ego. The welfare meals. Talk about the welfare meals. Right, right! That meal we had yesterday was super delicious. Paimon can still taste it whenever she closes her eyes. Is that so? <laughs> to tell you the truth, I've been helping out with making those welfare meals. I've been working as a kitchen assistant for about a month and a half now. Oh, so you're the one who made those delicious steaks. Amazing! You could be a professional chef! You are correct. I am a true professional. In fact, I even went to culinary school. But enough about that. Since you like my cooking, I guess that means we share similar tastes. Listen carefully. This little bombshell will help you learn what's really going on here in the fortress. Listen, kids. The power structure within the fortress is quite complicated. The overworlders couldn't care less about us down here. We're basically dogs to them. You've already met the one person here you should never cross, the Duke, Risley. He knows more than you think. And if he doesn't care about something, then he often doesn't bother dealing with it. Those who have the Duke's attention get all kinds of special perks. Even better treatment in the infirmary. I know who you mean. It's that Jurier character, right? I don't think there's anything useful about him at all. Why does he visit the infirmary practically every day? Is it normal for anyone to be going in and out of there so often? If you ask me, he's just faking it to get out of work. But did you know that Churia was a talented researcher from the Fontaine Research Institute before he came here? There's no denying that. I don't care if he was a researcher that could turn dirt into mora. Once you're in the fortress of Meripede, you're just another inmate like everybody else. Speaking of which, the last time I saw him, he was passing by the corridor with Lorveen. I also heard they started arguing in the library and got into a fight, right? Guess that's just how terrible of a guy he is. You mean he hit a woman? Wow, I never imagined he was that bad. But that Lorveen's also quite the odd one, you know? She's always gabbing away, got into a fight with a man, and she also got sent to the infirmary. Come to think of it, I always see her going to the sick bay every couple of days, too. Hmm. Huh. Wait a second. You don't think. Do you think it... Could it be that... They're secretly meeting there to go on dates? Ah, but it's really hard to imagine. <laughs> After all, I do remember seeing Lorveen beat Jerry to a pulp that one time. 
And we might be overthinking things. Over there. Yeah, you. Say, do you like playing card games? You know, like Genius Invocation TCG? You TCG players are like mint in the wild, literally sprouting up everywhere. Hey, come on now. What's wrong with finding fellow invocation aficionados? Anyway, care to join me for a game? Huh, all right, no pressure. But why would you be looking for people to play Genius Invocation in a place like this? Don't people usually come here to fight? <laughs> Whether you're throwing down cards or throwing punches, it's all a competition, isn't it? It's all the same in my eyes. There are lots of card players here in the fortress. When I saw you, I immediately thought, hey, even outsiders from other nations play cards. So I came over to say hi. Sure. Great! Since you've been here longer than us, you need to flex your seniority a little bit, right? Maybe you could start by telling us newcomers some stories about this place. I thought you would have already heard everything by now. All right, then. Did you have anything specific in mind? Or do you want me to just pick a topic? Why don't you pick? We'll let you know if we've heard it already. All right. Have you heard any strange rumors since you've arrived? Then, did you know that there are some people who are always gossiping over in the corner? Yeah, so you've already met those two. <laughs> They're quite a pair. They always keep an eye out for the latest happenings and gossip about everything. I've never seen anyone with more time on their hands. I heard that they used to be a chef and a bartender before they were sent down here. You know how bartenders are, always chatting with customers. And chefs love to pass the time just hanging out when they're not cooking. Hmm, good to know. Do you have anything else to tell us? Hmm, let me think. Sounds like you want to hear something a little more tantalizing. Oh, did you know that the Duke was also a convict in the Fortress of Meripede before? Huh? Wait, are you serious? That's right. The Duke was an inmate just like you and me. Seems he was exiled here for committing some crime. Who knows how he ended up rising up to become the warden, though. To go from an ordinary inmate to becoming the manager of the whole place? I'm not gonna lie, I kinda respect that. A forbidden zone? Hmm, sounds like something that someone just made up. I've never heard of that. Where did you hear about it? It's just a rumor we've been hearing, but no worries if you've never heard of it. Do you have anything else you can tell us? Anything else? Hmm, not that I can think of, but I'll be sure to tell you anything interesting I hear next time. You'll have to play a game of Genius Invocation with me first, though. Okay, we've talked to just about everyone, and it's about time for us to go meet Linny. According to the card he left us, we should go meet him in the production zone. <laughs>
My people are used to the desert life, but still, I hope that one day they'll be able to find an oasis of their own and leave the sandstorms behind for a better life. Look in your eyes. You found something? Hey, this is no time to be modest. Just tell them we found a boatload of information. Oh, as expected of the legendary duo, you have my full and undivided attention. Huh. I'd have never guessed that myself. The rumors swirling about this place are unreliable after all, and Master Child probably went missing because he found a way out. He is a harbinger after all. I suppose he's much more resourceful than I initially gave him credit for. Unfortunately, this isn't enough for our final report to Father. We need to find out Master Child's exact whereabouts. Father told me that even though Master Child said he was just coming to Fontaine for a vacation, he actually had some personal reasons. His agenda might be linked to his disappearance. His escape route is already flooded, so we'll have to cast someone with professional diving skills to chase after him. Well, when you put it that way, it's obvious that only Fremenet would be up to the task. Bingo! Is he around? He's working today. Coming here as a group would have attracted too much attention. I'll talk to him about it later. It's the least I can do. We're all in this together, so it's only fair for us to fulfill our end of the bargain. Honestly, I'm far more impressed by you guys managing to collect all this information right under Risley's watchful eyes. <laughs> Collecting information has always been our strong point. Now, let me think. To find out more information, and if he's to do that, he'll have to set out on the next pipe cleaning day at the earliest. That's six days from now. Hmm. And after that, he'll... You can even estimate how long it'll take for him to get back? We've been working together for a long time. We know each other's capabilities like the backs of our hands. Traveler, what say you to meeting here nine days from now? We'll be able to pick up Fremenet while we're at it, too. Oh, and there's just one last thing we'd like your help with. Though we can just sit back and wait for Fremenet's report on Master Child's whereabouts, we still need to make more progress on the investigation of the Forbidden Zone. Fremenet's no master of disguise, Lynette's still working on getting intel from the other areas, and I'll need to spend some time helping Fremenet prepare for his diving mission. So, you are the only ones we can count on. What do you want us to do? Will it be hard? Well, I won't call it easy per se, but I think you'll be able to pull it off. Listen carefully. You'll need to find an excuse to get into the infirmary and investigate the room and environs. 
You've mentioned several sketchy-looking people always meeting at the infirmary earlier, so it probably has something to do with the secret we're hoping to uncover. You've already met the head nurse, so she'll be less suspicious of you. Investigate the internal structure of the infirmary and any active dealings within, and pass those on to me alongside anything else you're able to discover. But also, there's no need to take risks. Don't forget, safety always comes first. Ah, uh, my apologies. I just started rambling out of habit. <sighs> it was almost as if I was talking to my younger sister. But that's not a bad thing, right? All right, then we'll head out as soon as we finish our prep. Let's go our separate ways for now, then. Don't forget, we meet here again in nine days. Stay safe. Now, Paimon will take a peek. Hmm. Hmm? There seem to be several people inside. Right. I feel like this. It's not impossible. Oh. Uh, it's a bit hard to understand them from here. So. Why don't we just try to talk to them in person? Let's go as soon as you're ready! Okay. Oh my! What's wrong, little one? There's no need to panic. Take a deep breath before you begin. The traveler started complaining of a stomach ache and then nausea and then collapsed onto the ground. Behind doesn't know what to do! Freezing limbs, twitching fingers, and pale complexion. <gasps> Could it be poison? Let me take a look. Please lie down over here. Don't worry, I'll get you to the bed safely. Here, hold on to my shoulder and walk slowly. <sighs> you can do it, Traveler! Don't apologize, you're sick after all. Now, please relax, I'm just going to do a preliminary checkup on you. Jacob has confirmed that she's not in any mortal danger. <sighs> that's our worst fear out of the way. Eh? Oh, that's good. I'll continue my diagnosis of the patient now. Please, relax and take a deep breath. <sighs> Don't sense serious damage to your organs, either. Does it hurt when I press here? <sighs> and here? Huh? But, based on my initial checkup, there shouldn't be a problem here. Oh, how strange. Hmm. Oh, what about here? Does this hurt? Oh! Hmm. I understand. So that's what it is. I think you just ate something that disagreed with you. That's all. Nothing too serious. Oh, outside of a pretty bad stomach ache when it decides to act up. <sighs> So that's what it is. Thank goodness it's not anything more serious. Mm-hmm. <sighs> and there have been other inmates complaining about the food recently. I'll inform our head chef, Mr. Wolsey, of this problem as soon as possible. Congratulations. The health risk is incredibly low, so you should recover within a couple days. Why don't you take a rest here while I go get some medicine for you? Miss Lorvine, I'll have to trouble you to help me look after this new patient while I'm gone. Very well. And she hopped away, just like that. Hello. So how are you feeling now? Her 
stomach aches really bad. She was stumbling about the whole way here, so Paimon's really worried. If Miss Sijuin says it's not a serious problem, then there's no need to worry. She's the best medic we've got down here. But it also looks like she's the only medic you've got down here. Ah, uh, well, that's true. What do you mean, that's true? That's really misrepresenting the situation. Of course I can't speak for the whole fortress, but it's not like everyone in prison here is useless, you know? Though they may have committed crimes and gotten locked up here as a result, they still know a thing or two about medicine, and they help Miss Sishuin take care of the sick and injured. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But did you have to lecture me about it in front of another patient? Aren't you a patient too? Where did all your energy come from? Uh... Ah, that's correct. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a bit ahead of myself. Are you two also sick? We've been sick a while. I come back every once in a while for checkups and to pick up the medicines Miss Sijuin prescribes for us. That's just the nature of chronic illnesses. As for her, <laughs> you could say she fancies herself as Miss Sijuin's capable helper because she learned a bit of medical knowledge ages ago. Please watch your mouth, Mr. Jurier. Don't forget that you are the primary reason I have frequent heart palpitations. Hey, don't start arguing now! Please, keep it civil at least! Someday, so there's no need to argue over silly things like this! <laughs> but... <laughs> Release. It's way too early for us to even think about that. And who the heck knows if we'd even be able to continue our previous lives? Please allow me to end this boring and useless conversation. Oh, and Mr. Jurier? I don't want to see your face here again any time soon. And same to you, Miss Lorveen. Anyway, that was more than enough rest for me, so I'm going to get out of this excessively noisy place. See you later, everyone. He just slowly walked off? Like that? Hmph. <laughs> That's just what he's like. I'm sorry you had to see all of that. I'm Lorveen, and that's... Well, his name is Jurier, but I hope you'll never have cause to remember his name. You really can't stand him, huh? I mean, can you blame me? Who would like someone who's as arrogant and obsessed with weird research topics as he is? <clears throat> but there's no need to keep dwelling on him. I... I'll accompany you two for a while. Miss Sishwin should be back soon, and I'm sure you'll feel better as soon as you've had some of her medicine. No, no. It's nothing. I'm back! Did you rest like you promised? Thank you for getting our medicine, Miss Sishwin. Did you all cooperate with your bed rest? I trust that nobody got up to walk around. <sighs> Good. Here, this should be two days' worth of medicine for you. Take one pill now, and then continue your bed rest. Uh, Miss Lorveen, I left in a bit of a hurry just now. Do you still remember if we discussed the color of the pill that you should be taking today? Huh. I remember. You said it should be yellow. Yellow, huh. I understand. These are yours. Please. Make sure to go to bed early after taking them tonight. You'll benefit from a good night's sleep. All right, then I'll also be on my way now. I hope you feel better soon, too. See ya! I'm going to fill out your medical record now. You're widely known as the Traveler, right? I just want to double-check a few details, if that's all right with you. Those two made quite the commotion just now, so why don't we let the Traveler rest? Paimon can answer the questions instead! 
Mm-hmm. So her primary symptoms are abdominal pain, with secondary symptoms of nausea. Is there anything else? Hmm. That's it! All right, then. Is there anything we should know besides to take the meds? No, her base constitution is quite good, so I'm sure she'll recover quite quickly after taking the medicine. Please, make sure to stick to bland or less stimulating foods, and don't stay up too late at night. Got it! Papa will hold the traveler to that for sure! Oh, you're going to take a nap already? Okay then, you get some rest. We've been to lots of places together. She may look a bit under the weather now, but she's actually super strong. Oh, so you're the best of companions. Well, don't worry, she'll recover soon. Ah, oh, you're awake! How do you feel? You slept for a really long time, but we never left! Well, now you can go back without a worry in the world. Remember to take your meds regularly, and remember bland foods! Mm hmm Thank you, Miss Sijuin! Seems like a lot of people have been coming down with an upset stomach lately. I'll need to address that. you were asleep. She seems like she's just a sincere nurse, and Paimon didn't notice anything unusual in the room. Are you sure we're not going off track with the infirmary? Did you two run into any trouble over the past few days? No, we just worked our shifts according to the schedule. Nothing weird happened. Hmm, that's good. That means you didn't raise any suspicions when you infiltrated the infirmary. We've taken a look at the slip you sent. 
Fremine successfully left the grounds via the pipes two days ago, and as of last night, Lynette has also infiltrated the infirmary after faking an illness. Wait, why is she getting involved as well? You already went above and beyond when you scoped out the infirmary. To put it more bluntly, even if we were to view that as something you did in exchange for Fremine's help, you've already done more than enough. Infiltrating a guarded stronghold is a different kind of job from a one-off investigation. We want to avoid using the same faces over and over and reduce the amount of suspicion that will fall on any given person. Lynette also felt like you have already taken the first step for us, so she should be the one to finish the job. So that's what Lynette thinks. Oh, Paimon hopes everything's going well for her. Hmm, perhaps that's true. You are both very good people, and we've come to appreciate that more than anyone else. Unfortunately, there's still one thing that could get between us, lest you've forgotten. The matter of our respective loyalties. You've mentioned before that you've had some run-ins with the Fatui. I can understand that feeling, so I assume you're just helping us out of the kindness of your hearts? Well, everyone could use some more friends! We'll be counting on you to help us in the future, too! Mm-hmm. Since I see you as friends, then it's even more important for us to protect you from any peril. Fremine and Lynette feel the same way. Glad to hear it. Then, let's go check on Lynette before Fremine returns. If everything went well, then she should be wrapping up her investigation right about now. Is now really a good time to go over? According to my observations, Sijuin always spends around half an hour away from the infirmary right before lunch. Lynette knows this as well, so this should be a good time to meet up with her. Also, I'm her brother, remember? It's only natural for an older brother to care about his younger sister's well-being. Okay, then let's head over right away! Lynette should be here right now. Huh. Strange. Lynette? As expected, Sijuin isn't here, but why isn't Lynette here? No, Lynette rarely deviates from the plan. We agreed that if she were to make changes on the fly, she'd find a way to let me know. Unless... Let's see if there are any clues around here. We can look while we wait for her. Who knows? Maybe she'll be back soon. Okay. some books here and a few files. They all look like medical records. Hmm. Advanced nursing, how to raise the spirit of your patients, a quick guide to the psychology of emotions, and the meaning of laughter. These sure are some interesting books. Who knew Sijuin would be interested in these kinds of things? She even has books on understanding people's motivations and feelings. Hmm. Is it because she's a melazine? Or does she have a need to understand her patient's emotional state? Hmm... Seems quite normal to me. These are skills that would come in handy for a nurse from time to time. None of the beds have any signs of having been slept in... ...except that one over there. That's the one Lynette must have used, right? You said she was pretending to be sick! Mm-hmm. She would have said her migraine was having a particularly bad flare-up. Generally speaking, the head nurse would then ask her to lie down and rest while she left to retrieve the medication. Which means either the head nurse didn't return the entire time from when Lynette laid down up until she left the bed, or the nurse intentionally left it this way. <sighs> Wait, this thing? It doesn't look like it's been disguised that well. The space behind it is empty. 
From its size, I don't think it's an entrance that is meant to be taken apart. There's probably a mechanism around here somewhere. Could Lynette have tried to get inside? But if that's the case, she would have contacted me for sure. Hmm. Let's look around here for some more clues. Don't panic, just take another look. A slip of paper? It's right over here, and there's a bunch written on it, too. It reads, Out of respect for your usual practices, I'll use a piece of paper or card as the medium to pass on my message. You may consider this as me giving you my best regards. This is... Is... is that all? The back! Ah, this... this is... Show me! Now! Deliberately leave the infirmary unguarded to use it as bait? Wait, you mean he was aware of our goals from the very beginning? But why? We didn't run into any trouble last time, and he also never reached out to us since. Yes, that is a crucial question. Risley, he doesn't do anything without a clear goal or reason. So this means he had no concerns about your activities from the very beginning. You are not from the same camp as us. You were sent down here by Nervulet, so you have no conflict of interest with Risley. We're a completely different story, though. I'd like to know that, too. Why did he only go after her? <laughs> Don't panic. Just think everything over. I have to stay calm. This is not like what happened last time. The situation's different now. <laughs> Wait, you're right. Wait, but that means... The fact that Fremenet was able to leave the grounds... Could Risley have let him go as well? But what does he gain by letting Fremenet leave like that? <sighs> so he's challenging me and trying to provoke me, I'm sure of it. <sighs> we never should have sent out Fremenet. We had to go through all that trouble to find an opening to sneak him around the guards and into the pipe, and we even thought luck was on our side. If Risley let him leave on purpose, then he's probably in a terrible spot now as well. Lenny's getting more and more panicked. We have to calm him down. Don't be like this, Lenny. Fremenet wouldn't have left if we hadn't told you about Child. That was our fault. No. I'm the leader of this operation, and I'm the one responsible for this team. I was the one who failed to protect them. I'll go talk to Risley. Traveler, please. I simply cannot allow Lynette to be abducted again. I have to go. I'll find a way to get them back. He's rushed out the door. After him. Hmm. Right. I feel like we still have some room to make changes on these details. It's not impossible, but it'll require extensive testing. Is that so? Very well. Then please be mindful of the time. Huh? Is someone? Pack everything up. Whoever's outside is eavesdropping. They'll probably come in once we stop talking. Are you okay? Ah, oh, these two. As expected, they've already found this place. Oh, they are quite sharp. What a delightful turn of events. I like smart people, but I also like playing dumb. I like the feeling of being trusted. Oh my! What's wrong, little one? There's no need to panic. Take a deep breath before you begin. Being able to read human expressions is quite the useful skill. Wait! Wait! It's no use! We have to catch up to 
Sam. He's already out of sight. How is he so fast? Let's go head him off at Risley's office. Come out and face me, Risley! Hmm. Aren't we at an administrative office space? Why don't you at least try to follow even a couple rules from the Fortress's indoor management regulations? What did you do to my sister? I ran into the young miss at the infirmary. I'd heard that she was suffering from quite the migraine, so I decided to invite her over for a cup of tea. I do have some teas in my collection that can work wonders against such an illness. Stop joking around! Where did you take my siblings? I have also heard that your performances are quite the spectacle. Miss Lynette would sometimes enter a box filled with water, only to emerge the next second from another place altogether. Maybe she'll appear behind you right now if you were to turn your head. Is he trying to trick me into turning my head? No, he's probably not looking to attack me right now. All of the hostages are in his hands, and he's even in the mood for small talk. That means Lynette is probably still alive. You knew we were investigating the infirmary from the start. So you deliberately aroused the Traveler's suspicions and baited us into continuing our investigation, just so that you'd be able to kidnap Lynette. <sighs> As for Fremenay, No. You probably didn't even interfere with Child's escape. You let him go, so you could purge the Fatui members that we had planted into your ranks. There was no need to do so. The Fortress of Meripede is a pretty pleasant place. Most people enjoy their lives here. The only ones who act differently are those with personal agendas. It was quite easy to identify your colleagues. You removed our original members and spread the news of Child's escape so Father would assign our team to come down and investigate. Fremene has also fallen into your hands, right? If you're oh so omnipotent and so in control, why would you need hostages? One correction. Lynette is in my hands right now, but Fremene is not. He's not. What do you really want? Lenny! Oh, wonderful. Everyone is here, so I'll only need to say this once. Thank you so much for cooperating with me. I'm eager and to the point, I see. Alas, only Miss Lynette is currently having a cup of the Fortress's finest tea. Although, as per your original plan, Mr. Fremenet should also have returned to the Fortress by now. But he has neither shown up within my gates, nor has he been taken into any kind of custody. So where do you think he may be right now? Wait, you can't mean you locked him outside in the sea? I closed the fortress's gate to the outside world. That's all. Fremen is a star diver, so he should be fine, right? No, we're still here, so he'd definitely try to find a way to come back for us. So we can't assume he might have made a break for the surface. But why would I do this, you may be asking? To have an audience with you, of course. My intel tells me that Mr. Linney is a great magician, so it's only natural for me to want to have some cards of my own when it comes to negotiating. Besides, I do recall you mentioning to Miss Lynette that you've always wanted to have a face-to-face -face meeting with the Lord of the Fortress of Meripede, regardless of whether it was in a personal or a professional capacity. Well, you got your wish. So, you've been keeping tabs on us before we even set foot in the fortress. Some of my folks just happened to hear a thing or two, that's all. In any case, I will be straight with you. I was willing to play dumb and turn a blind eye, so we had a pleasant few days playing games together here. But once you started focusing on the Forbidden Zone, all of that changed. Mr. Linney, the cards are stacked against you right now. Miss Lynette is in my hands, and Mr. Fremenet is still slowly being pickled out there in the brine. 
You know just as well as I that he cannot last out there forever. You need do but one thing to guarantee their safety. I would like you to contact your superior, and ideally invite her over for a cup of tea with me. You want to see father? <laughs> but why should she bother giving you an audience? Well, if she cares for the well-being of her dearest children, she should have plenty of motivation to join me for a parent's evening. I've heard that the bonds between the members of the House of the Hearth are like the bonds of family. I don't see why she would refuse. Why did you think Father sent us to handle the Fortress of Meripede? This place is basically a no-man's land. It wouldn't be fitting for anyone as important as a Harbinger like Father to come here in person. Oh, I see. So it's because she doesn't care for my place here. <sighs> That's such a shame. After all, I've amassed quite the tea collection. I was looking forward to sharing it with her. Both Monsieur Nervillet and Lady Farina have already received many samples as gifts. Was this the extent of your master plan to get to Father? No matter how much pressure you may put on me, I won't allow you to use us to blackmail her. You people really are difficult to get along with. All I'm asking for is a face-to-face -face conversation. Does she truly have no interest in the Fortress's secret? Mr. Linney, you have one last chance to invite your father here. If you refuse... <sighs> Linny! Instead of asking why I'm doing this, why don't you try to see things from my perspective for a second? From the very beginning, the Fatui has been actively infiltrating my fortress. I gave you a warning by cutting off the first few operatives I found, but that only caused you to double down. Had you given up on the fortress then and there, I'd have no reason to want to talk. Mr. Fremenet left the fortress on his own, and Miss Lynette tried to pry out my secrets right in front of me. No matter how you look at it, the responsibility for this falls on you. I... I shouldn't ask Father to do anything because of us. Six. Five. Wait, I... Two. One. Time's up. It really is a shame, Mr. Lenny. Negotiations have broken down. Please leave, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for my afternoon tea. <laughs> yeah! Listen to the Traveler! If you can't talk to Linny, can you at least talk to us? You do realize that I'm only letting you go because of Nervalet, yes? You're here helping him out, and I've already done my best to stay out of your way. But that doesn't mean you can just do whatever you want. The fortress may be small and remote, but it still has its own set of laws. Hmm... Then how about this? Those who are capable deserve respect. You've spent quite some time investigating my home turf by now, so why don't you tell me a thing or two about what you found, hmm? I'll ask you three questions. Answer all of them correctly, and I'll agree to your request. Question one. Regarding the hidden rules of the production zone, what is the truth behind the one about not being allowed to work for three days in a row? that the Melusine race perceives the world very differently from humans. According to Collins, the Pancration tournament only took place because the Fanta company sponsored it. Fanta's internal reports suggest that they're starting a new trial of an unnamed and unpackaged product. We often see Miss Sijuin observing the prisoners at work near the production zone. It seems like she can perceive the general state of a person's health just by looking at them. The Fanta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the real value of coupons. Meanwhile, the Duke believes that only idiots who don't understand the value of coupons would spend them on Fanta. I've been told that the infirmary is always empty for the half hour just before lunch. But what could Sijuin be doing during that time?
I've been told that the infirmary is always up. Fonta's internal reports. The Fonta promoter has been. We often see Miss Sijuin observing the prisoners at work near the production zone. According to Collins, the Pancrete. The research notes said that the Melusine race perceives the world very. internal reports suggest that I've been told that the infirmary is open. According to Collins, the Pancration tournament only took place because the Fonta company sponsored The Fonta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't According to Collins, the Pancration tournament We often see Miss Sijuin observing the prisoners at work near the product The Fonta promoter has been struggling. Fonta's internal reports. I've been told that the infirmary is. Ah, so that's what's going on. Paimon understands it now. Who would have guessed? The hidden rule of the production zone. People are not supposed to work three days in a row, and if they do, they'll get strange meat in their welfare meal. At first we thought this strange meat must have something to do with the people who disappeared, but in reality, they were all prepared by Sijuin, the head nurse. She often visits the production zone to observe the workers' health, and makes a note of anyone who has worn themselves out after three full days of work. Out of her sense of duty as the head nurse, as well as her genuine concern for the workers' health, Sijuin visits the cafeteria right before lunch and cooks an extra dish for those who can use the stamina boost. Sijuin has only the best intentions with her surprise gift and doesn't want anyone to find out about what she does. However, unfortunately, Melusines as a race perceive the world differently from humans and their sense of aesthetics is even more alien to us. The recipients of her lovingly prepared special meals cannot taste the care within and usually just freak out. Are we on the right track? <laughs> Not bad. You've uncovered Sijuin's secret and even guessed her intentions correctly as well. It's nice to know that her efforts have not gone unacknowledged. Alright, now for my next question. There are also some hidden rules in the Pancration Ring, including the one that you're not allowed to support both sides of a fight. Why is that?
The research notes said that the Melusine race perceives the world very differently from humans. Because of that, the Melusines have also developed a sense of a. We often see Miss Sijuin. I've been told that the infirmary is all. The Fanta promoter has been struggling. The research notes said that the Melusine rate. According to Collins, the Pancration Tournament. According to Collins, the Pan. The research notes said that the Melusine race. We often see Miss Sijuin observing the prisoners at work near the production zone. Fanta's internal reports suggest that they're starting. The Fanta promoter has been struggling. rule too now, so there really was nothing to be afraid of. That hidden rule of the pancreation ring is about how, um, people are not supposed to bet on both boxers at the same time, and if they do, they'll receive a package containing a strange blood-colored liquid. People get scared when they see it because they've subconsciously begun to associate it with the missing boxer. But really, it's just a bottle of the latest yet-to-be-named and packaged new Fanta trial product. A blood-red drink. It's no wonder even Fanta's own staff were questioning the company's decision-making. The company, facing backlash from its own staff, decided to try to trial the product on a smaller scale to see how it might be received by customers. They came to the Fortress of Meropede and offered to sponsor the Pancration Tournament so they could push their new product. But the Duke completely refused to even entertain the idea. The Duke, knowing how valuable coupons are in the fortress, knew that only total idiots who didn't understand their true value would bother buying a Fanta product here. And so, only those who proved their stupidity by being dumb enough to bet on two opposing sides of the same match were selected to receive the drinks. I acknowledge the effort you've put into bringing the truth of this mystery to light. Although, based on your description, that Fanta promoter is a bit too careless with his words, I may just reconsider my collaboration with the company. Alright, and here's the final question. What's the secret behind our head nurse and all of her patients in the infirmary? Stop your cruel and pointless games, Risley! You know that we haven't finished our investigation, so there's no way we can answer the last question! The thought is... You'll pay for this?! <laughs> Lenny! Are you alright?! Oh, <laughs> close one. I owe you, Sijuin. That was a fantastic shot. It was nothing, Your Grace. Sijuin?! Though this gun may look like a toy, it's actually fully functional, as I just demonstrated. See, Lean. You... Not at all. I am merely a resident of the fortress, and thus protecting it is my duty. When Monsieur Nervulet asked me to come here, he told me that my job would be to take care of the well-being of everyone here. I am merely discharging my duties. But if you mean what you just said, then isn't Linny someone you should be looking after as well? Isn't he a resident here just like the rest of us? But I really am just doing what Monsieur Nervulet told me to do. Everything I did, I've done to protect them. Had I not, they would be in far more dire straits right now. His Grace knows it too, right? Your Grace? Mind proving my innocence to them? <sighs> My dear Sijuin, whatever shall I do with you? Would it have killed you to just wait another minute or two? Well, it's nearly time after all. <sighs> the way you do things can be truly frustrating sometimes, Your Grace. I figured I should try to talk some sense into you. What are you talking about? What time? Take me if you want. Let them go. Mm hmm, how touching. 
Can you just give me one more minute? Don't pee like that, Your Grace. All right, everyone, calm down. Two more visitors will be arriving any time now. I'll go get a cup of tea. Miss Sejuine, I leave Miss Lynette in your care. You... What are you doing? I believe I hear footsteps. Some space, please. Ah, Miss Clorand. My door. Fremenet. To... Fremenet. What's going on? What is Clorand doing here? Work. I'm sorry about shooting you, Mr. Linney. The tranquilizing effect will begin to wear off soon. Please take it easy in the meantime, though. What happened to Fremenet? Wasn't he diving just outside of the fortress? Why is he looking like... like this? A flushed face, an accelerated pulse. He must have consumed primordial seawater. What did you say? Uh, please, make some space. I'll need to give Mr. Fremenet a more thorough checkup. Your Grace, I'll leave the rest to you. I'll talk to Clorand while you get Fremenet to where he needs to be. Everything else can wait. How is he? These symptoms are probably caused by an acute ingestion of a large amount of primordial seawater. Still, his condition is not critical. Of course, it would be best if he stayed for further observation. But let's leave him here for now, and move him to the infirmary once he's recovered a bit more. Uh, sorry. I am aware that the infirmary may not be your favorite place in the world at the moment. We do only have a single clinic in the fortress, however. Why would he ingest a large amount of primordial seawater after leaving the fortress? How could that possibly happen? Please, look after Mr. Fremenet for the moment. I'll go fetch some medicine and a respirator. Oh, I'll bring Miss Lynette back with me. Where is she? How is she right now? Oh, she just took a nap in an empty room after I tranquilized her. If my calculations are correct, she should also be waking up right around now. You might not believe me, but His Grace and I actually made some snacks and tea for her. What's that look on your face? I thought I made good time on the way back. Oh, I'm just admiring your punctuality. Had you arrived just a few minutes later, Sijuin may have been forced to shoot Mr. Linney again. How's the situation out there? The water has changed. It's pretty much as expected. The concentration of primordial seawater has increased significantly. I was only out there a short time, so it wasn't too bad. But if one were to stay for any significant amount of time... Well, you can see how that boy is doing. Where was he when you found him? The abandoned zone at the end of the pipes. A good distance into the water. Closer than I thought. He must have recognized it early on and tried desperately to swim back. Locking the door was necessary. I don't think we could have saved two. Well, I did try to convince them that I had my reasons. Never seems to work, though. It would probably work on Nouvellet. He has a knack for picking out who had good intentions, even when the outcomes were all terrible. Uh, it's a bad sign if you're having to plead your case to Nouvellet. Want some tea? Mm, not particularly. If you want to drink some that badly, just say so. Fine, I'd like to get some tea. Want me to get you a cup too, since I've already made it? Uh, might as well then, I suppose. Actually, do you have a towel? I would like to dry my hair. Linny, are you okay? <sighs> I'll be fine. They're all here now. Don't worry about me. Are you sure? You don't look alright. My hands and feet are still a bit weak, but... 
That's probably just the residual effects of the tranquilizer shot. I'm back, everyone. Lenny! Oh, Traveler, Paimon, you're here too. Remene? Is he... He'll be fine. But for now, please help me lift him up. His breathing's beginning to slow down. Give me a hand and help me get him to the infirmary. Yeah, I'll take him from this side. Lynette, together? On it. Traveler, you seem pretty worried about him. Want to come with us? The Duke and Clarinda are gone. They probably went to get some tea. The Duke will explain the truth in just a bit. Miss Clarion will need a break, since she only just returned from rescuing Fremine out of the sea. awake. Fremine, how do you feel? Uh, Lenny... Lynette... We're all here. Uh, where...? The infirmary at the Fortress of Meripede, Mr. Fremine. And you are no longer in any danger. How do you feel? Don't push yourself if you're not feeling up to it. Uh, Traveler... Paimon... It's been so long. Uh, the sea! There's something wrong with the seawater. Shh, it's okay. We can talk about it after you've recovered. No, listen to me. This is really serious. There's primordial seawater mixed into the regular seawater. I don't know why it's there, but no one should touch it. Pipes... Uh... Right, the pipes. It's all coming back to me now.
I'm in. Hmm. Seems like this pipe hasn't been used in a long time. It looks abandoned. <sighs> Where could Master Child be? looks like it's been tampered with. Could he have done it? Seems like I'll have to avoid those obstacles while I turn it. This is where the water starts. Okay. Master Child probably dived into the water. I'll go take a look as well. The 
vegetation here is a bit more sparse. These traces are natural. A person must have left them, and recently. I should be going in the right direction. Oh, there are traces here too. I need to keep going. Huh? The traces are gone. But I don't see where he could have gone from here. Ah! Uh, wait! What the? Uh, uh. <sighs> My heart is racing, and it's getting harder and harder to breathe. What's going on? No good. I have to get back. They still don't know anything about what's going on. If I turn back right now, I should still be able to make it. I can't die here. This is, this is bad. I'm feeling worse and worse, and I'm still underwater. I have to push on. So, in other words, the trail you were following vanished, and you had no idea where Master Child could have gone, but there was also no obvious place for him to have disappeared to. Mm-hmm. That's right. I tried my best to swim back, but I had already put some distance between myself and the fortress, and I just couldn't find the strength to keep going. I probably passed out some time after that, and you know the rest. Miss Clarand brought you back, but we also don't know why she just suddenly appeared at the fortress, or why she went out to save you. Miss Clorand, you say? I must go thank her in person. You're still too weak from an A. You can go after you've had some more rest. Miss Lynette is right. I believe Miss Clorand will stay here as a guest for another few days, so there's no need to hurry. A guest? Then I can assume Risley was the one who invited her to come down here? You should ask His Grace about that. He'll be able to explain better than me. Yeah, it's about time he actually told us what's going on. Wanna come with us, Liddy? Uh, no, please go on without me. I don't want to leave just yet. Lenny. The logical part of my brain is aware that we're safe right now, but I still can't bring myself to leave. Both of you are just in danger. <sighs> Understood. Then, let's just sit together for a while. In that case, I'll leave the infirmary to you. The Traveler and I are going to head out for now. As long as you stay in here, I don't think you'll be disturbed. Thank you. Thank you. 
I take it Mr. Fremenet's condition has stabilized? Of course! I wouldn't have left the infirmary otherwise. I've been expecting those two, but might I inquire as to the purpose of your visit, Miss Sejuin? I wanted to check up on Miss Cloran. How are you feeling? Mostly fine, I think. If you don't mind, I'd like to perform another quick physical exam. It'll just take a few minutes. All right. Thank you for looking out for me. I'll take my leave for now, then. Well, want to explain yourself, Risley? <laughs> of course. But I'm not partial to the word choice of explain. How about enlighten? Mm, where should I begin? How about you start by asking me any questions you have? You can start with whichever one you'd like to get answered the most. Hmm. Then Paimon will begin. Did you know about Lenny's goals from the very beginning? Hmm, no. I just knew they were Fatui operatives sent to the fortress by the Knave. As for their specific goals, I only figured those out as you made progress on your investigation. You managed to monitor and stay ahead of them even though you didn't know what they were trying to do? They came here with ulterior motives. I'm quite adept at discerning what that kind of behavior signals. Initially, I thought their goal was just to investigate Child's disappearance. Linny suggested that I had deliberately let him escape, but in truth, I didn't really do anything special to help or hinder him while he was here. Everything he did, from finding helpers to leaving this place, he did on his own. Of course, it's inevitable that the Knave would make a big deal out of her fellow Harbinger's unexplained disappearance. I'm also quite curious about where that Harbinger went, so I figured I might as well let the Fatui do their own investigative work. All I care about is the answer. So you were hoping Linny's group would just do your work for you! You make it sound like that's a bad thing. Unfortunately, things didn't go as planned. I assume that Fremenet has told you already, the ratio of primordial seawater around the fortress of Meripede is on the rise. The Forbidden Zone has always been Linny's target, and you got roped into that investigation after running into him. I began to intervene out of concern for your safety, and also to prevent the fortress from becoming entangled in more irksome matters. Are the rumors true? That you're also a former criminal? Why would you put it like that? Isn't staying here all day and serving as the manager of the fortress a kind of sentence unto itself? Another form of prison? I just happen to have some support from the rest of the inmates. That's all. Oh, right! Paimon wanted to ask, who invited Clarin down here? Me, of course. I paid her good Mora to come down to the fortress for some field work. As a champion duelist, Miss Cloran could be considered to be an independent party. I needed to find an exceptionally capable person to help me get through the appending crisis. And saving Fremenet was part of that crisis? You can think of it like that, yes. Credit where credit is due, that boy is quite adept at diving. Had conditions not been as hostile as they were, he probably would have found the missing Harbinger already. That's not something you should be asking after. Nervalette only asked you to investigate Child's whereabouts. All I need to prove to you is that the Forbidden Zone had nothing to do with the Harbinger's disappearance. That should be clear now that you've spoken to Fremenet. But we've already uncovered that there's something wrong with the infirmary, and we've answered a bunch of questions that you threw at us. Isn't it about time that you answer our last question in return? You make a compelling case. Do you really want to know the answer that badly? Yeah, Paimon really wants to know! Even if the truth may not be pleasant? Follow me. It seems you've forgotten just what kind of place the Fortress of Meripede is. <laughs> 
stand on the central plate. Wait, is there a secret mechanism or... Whoa! This is the Forbidden Zone? Honestly, for a place so well hidden, Paimon sure doesn't see anything special. What a huge door! There are three such isolation gates in total. Generally speaking, I'm the only one who's allowed to go inside. Hence the name Forbidden Zone. Am I correct to assume you're going to run on back and tell your little Fatui friends everything? Keeping anything from them? <laughs> well, I'd advise you wait until you've seen the whole truth of this place for yourself before deciding whether or not to tell them. Huh. So there's a switch on the side. Stand back. Go on, have a look. I've been interested in what lies beyond that gate ever since I assumed leadership of the Fortress of Meripede. Of course, it would be unwise to recklessly open it but it'd also be risky and negligent to simply ignore any potential danger that could be behind it. The readings on that dashboard have not budged since the day when I first laid eyes on this place. But over the past year, the needle has crept upwards from its original position, likely because some parameter it's been tracking has changed, if only infinitesimally. Normally I would have ignored it, but I happen to have some free time when I noticed it, so I investigated. Any guesses what the reading could be tracking? Very reasonable guesses. I've considered both of those as well. Unfortunately, our dashboard is tracking something less ordinary. The temperature should vary with weather and climate changes, so for something that rarely shifts, the water pressure is more likely. We ran a few tests to increase the pressure from the outside, but the readings didn't change at all. Later on, a few more possibilities occurred to me, such as a potential connection with the primordial sea. I began to make a few preparations based on that hypothesis. Over the past few days, the needle has moved again. With that, and the symptoms that Fremenet displayed after leaving the fortress, I can now confidently conclude that the readings represent the concentration of primordial seawater in the seawater nearby. The concentration of... primordial seawater? But we're already under the sea! And that is precisely the problem. We're at the bottom of the sea, and now we're surrounded by toxic seawater. Somehow, primordial seawater got mixed in, and the concentration is steadily rising. Yes, that's very likely. But, forget about the two of us! Not even Novelette knows where the primordial sea could be, much less where we could find and plug a leak. Oh. Oh! Seems like you've figured it out. I believe the primordial sea lies directly beneath this sluice gate. For some reason, the primordial seawater levels have risen significantly, and it's now very close to us. The indicators are now red. Although the gate still stands, some primordial seawater has already leaked out and mixed into the sea around us. If this continues, soon it will no longer be able to hold back the primordial sea at all. Yeah, you know what the legends say. If this place falls, then everyone in Fontaine will be turned into puddles in the span of a night. Your expression tells me you think this might be part of a vast, complicated conspiracy. To be honest, you might find the actual answer may be exceedingly boring. 
It's just that the secret of the Forbidden Zone had been long forgotten by the nation before I rediscovered it with my research. There's no single founder of the Fortress of Meripede in any traditional sense. What we know about its history has been left to us by the people who used to live here. When the previous Hydro Archon, Egeria, ruled the land, all convicted criminals from Fontaine were exiled. The people drove the criminals away like a wolf pack chasing away the banished. The criminals received no sympathy of any kind from the people. They were exiled to the desolate seaside, where they experienced only pain, struggle, and the bone-chilling cold. Some of them began to repent, and prayed to the Hydro Archon, asking if there was still anything they could do. The Hydro Archon took pity on them, and said, You may go guard my secret, deep underneath the waves. And so, leaning on the power of the Hydro Archon, they gathered underneath the sea and began to build a fortress. They became a community down there in the deeps, and over the years helped it to grow. As the number of exiles increased, more and more people joined the community. When the first group of exiles died, they left the yet unfinished fortress to their successors. The Hydro Archon continued to lend her support, allowing the fortress and what it stood for to continue growing ever larger. Before long, this dark underwater fortress became the sinner's only home. And with that, the people here stopped referring to the fortress as a prison. They saw themselves as repenting sinners, who would regain their freedom once they had sufficiently redeemed themselves. But as time went on, people also realized that the fortress was a lonely place. Once they had gotten used to life here, they could no longer feel comfortable living in the overworld. Once they had finished serving their sentences, some people left and some others chose to stay. They'd find some idle position and let their withered souls fade away with the ancient secrets of the past. After many, many centuries, few people still remember the reason for the fortress's founding. Now they just see it as an integral pillar of Fontanian society, as the place where criminals deserve to be sent. Now and again, researchers manage to break one law or another and live out their days in the fortress. I learned all this from an elderly historian. Everyone else just thought he'd made it all up. But now you know every part of that history is true. Indeed. That's just as the prophecy says. If this gate fails, then everyone will be dissolved into the sea. To be frank, not really. But sadly, that hasn't stopped this prophecy from proving all too accurate. Prophecies are troublesome things. Just hearing one will create the first wave of panic. Seeing signs of it will bring about the second, and actually witnessing it in real time, the third. Let's go somewhere else. I want to show you something. This is it. Your Grace, perfect timing. The results from our last round of experiments have- Wait, Jurier, he's not alone! Huh? Luravine and Jurier? No need to panic, you two. I've already told them about our plan. What? After you warned us not to tell a single soul about any of this? I'm skeptical as well. Are you sure they are trustworthy? The results speak for themselves, don't they? These two may already know more than you could ever imagine. All right, then, if your grace insists. They seem harmless enough, so I'll trust them for now. Well, how about some reintroductions? This is Jurier, one of the highest-ranked researchers from the Fontaine Research Institute. He used to work under Edwin. I trust that you've heard of Edwin? Good. Saves me a bit of time explaining. Edwin's main areas of research were archaeum and gravimeters. As his assistant, Jurier is quite familiar with them as well. I hired him to be my technical consultant. You... you want to blow up the Fortress of Meripede? Ah, what a lovely idea. I'm already imagining it in my head. Gotta admit, I'm tempted as well. Guys, focus! Focus! <laughs> that taskmaster over there is Miss Lorvine, and is also one of my technical consultants. While Jurier used to be Edwin's assistant, she used to be Jurier's assistant. Are they together? See, everyone keeps asking this question. 
Are you too sure you're not a couple and just using your work as a convenient cover? I... Your Grace, I am not in a relationship with this man. If I dated her, I'd officially be madder than Edwin. Jeez, uh, forget I said anything then. Follow me. Whoa, there's another door that goes right up. Your constant amazement makes it seem like the fortress can do anything. But, Paimon really thinks everything's super cool! Well, let's spice it up a bit. And here you go. What a huge... ship? This is also a production zone that Paimon's never seen before. What's going on? How much do you know about Fontanian history? Uh... not much at all. Well, then maybe you haven't heard the story of ancient Lemuria. To give you a quick rundown, Fontaine used to be ruled by the Lemurian dynasty. According to legend, the Lemurian king Remus came to this land after being inspired by divine revelation and found the seer Sibylla, who had taken on the form of a golden bee. Taking the golden bee with him and riding on a huge ship, the Fortuna, he created his nation above the surging waves. He called his nation Lemuria and used the Fortuna to incessantly search for new tribes and islands, calling on them to join his empire. There's a ship in this story too? Where there's water, there'll be ships. People believe that hope can always be found at the end of a voyage. Do you believe that too? To a point, I think. As you've already seen, I have a whole factory's worth of labor, materials, and technology at my disposal. Certainly can't hurt to give it a try. So the moment I began to speculate that the Primordial Sea might lie underneath the gate, I also began this project. Were you inspired by the legendary Fortuna? Hmm, maybe. Fontanians need something to hold on to to cope with the impending disaster. Were the workers to find out the truth behind this ship, riots would destroy the fortress faster than any catastrophe. As the fortress's administrator, I'd never make such a reckless call. All right, that's enough talking for now. I'll need another three cups of tea to soothe my throat. Do you have any other questions? Seems like you're good. Come on, I'll take you back. I'll leave you here for now. Oh! Uh... Thank you so much. No worries. But don't forget, it's up to you whether or not you want to share what you just saw. What you do from here on out will likely affect those three as well. Yeah, we'll put a lot of thought into it for sure. Great. I look forward to what happens next. Welcome back. Do you want a cup of tea? How can you be so much like Risley, always drinking tea? Huh. Actually, now that you mention it, I just remembered something now. While I was sedated, I could still barely hear two people talking next to me. They were discussing everything, from the leaves, to the water, and even the teacups themselves. Must have been Risley and Sishween. Yeah. I heard one male voice and one female, so 
It should have been the two of them. They really were just talking about brewing tea. I really can't make sense of this place. So, Traveler, Paimon, were you able to learn anything from Risley? Yeah, he explained everything! Very well. Then, would you mind checking your answers against my speculations? Yeah, I took the time to rest, so I'm feeling a lot more relaxed now. Nobody else is around, and Miss Sijuin is also busy with something or other, so let's just talk here. All right, then I'll posit my theories. I asked myself three questions. Firstly, why was Fremenet affected by the primordial seawater? It was because he dove into the sea. My theory is, the long-lost primordial sea is probably very close to the fortress of Meripede. Ooh, he's good! He got that right on the first try! That's our Linny. Secondly, Risley's attitude changed dramatically during the course of our stay here. He ignored us completely at first, then suddenly roadblocked us. Why? I spent quite a long time thinking about this. If he has been monitoring the Fatui since the very beginning, he probably ignored us at first because he was hoping we could find Master Child for him. What's more, the Fortress of Meripede is not part of Fontaine's court system, nor does it report to Udex Nervilet. Risley is basically the king of a no-man's land. As long as the fortress doesn't do anything about Master Child's disappearance, Father can use it to pressure the Fontaine authorities. And while the two factions are pitted against each other, Risley will be free to move between the parties of interest. If I had to guess, he probably has something that he's working on himself. It's likely related to the secret of the infirmary, but I just can't think of what it could be. You're super smart! <laughs> Thanks so much. Then finally, there's the last question. If Risley does have a plan, what could it be? All I know for now is that his plan probably has something to do with the changing nature of the seawater. He's even gotten Cloran to help him out. Ah, uh, that can't be the full extent of what he's doing. There's probably a secret passageway behind the block in the infirmary, and there's something big in the fortress that most people here never get to see. He has a bargaining chip, and it could be important enough for Father to deal with him directly. I don't have enough information, so I have no idea what his chip might be. But let me guess. You have the last piece of the puzzle. I can't believe it. The sea will engulf everyone. Just like the prophecy said. Could Risley have wanted to meet Father to figure out a way to deal with this crisis? If you remember, I once mentioned that Father sees the House of the Hearth as her base of operations, and she truly wants to resolve the crisis. But how could Risley have known that? Or perhaps he didn't know, and just wanted to bring Father over to his side? Which could be why he said he just wanted to negotiate. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I understand your concerns as well, Traveler. I'll figure out a way to pass this on to our father. No matter what, we're on your side. The two of you have already aided us far too much. We probably wouldn't be standing here right now if not for you. If you ever need anything else going forward, please come to the House of the Hearth at any time. Though you may not share the sentiment, after all that we've gone through together, the three of us basically see you as family now. You have my gratitude. Thank you for protecting Linny when it really mattered. And thank you for sharing the secrets of the fortress with us. We didn't think you were going to do it. Uh, why are you being so formal all of a sudden? <laughs> Given your strength, you might not need our help at all. But if you are ever in danger, we will try our best to protect you. Aww, the sound of that makes Paimon feel all warm and safe inside. Uh, Paimon... Paimon's hungry. Oh, uh... You've done so much already. Go get some food. Alright, then we'll catch you guys another-
dinner time. <sighs> I feel like I should try to become someone more capable of helping. You're incredibly helpful. Lenny thinks so too. Yeah. You two are always telling me not to push myself, but aren't you just like that as well? from human beings. I must know what you're thinking if I want to take good care of you. You're really good at taking care of people. Even though you're so short, you still talk and act like an older sister. Really? You're reminded of an older sister? <laughs> That's great to hear. Oh, and what did you mean back in Risley's office? When you said that you were protecting Linny and his siblings as well? Oh, that. I just asked His Grace to look out for those children, especially that diver boy. I was getting a bit worried after hearing that something was wrong with the water. Thankfully, Clorand is very strong and managed to save him in the nick of time. His Grace also sealed the pipes after Clorand left, to make sure that Linny wouldn't impulsively chase after his brother. Although the path was blocked, we still stationed some guards there to stop anyone from approaching. They were instructed to only open the door once Miss Clorand had returned. Oh, and I was keeping an eye on Mr. Linny as well. We had to press him, but we couldn't allow him to be in any real danger. You were all super considerate and really thought everything through. <laughs> it's just what we do down here at the fortress. At least this has been His Grace's style for as long as he's been the leader. Oh. I really wish Monsieur Nervula would come down here more often, too. I feel like he'd like it here, with all the darkness and chaos. Get a good night's rest, you two. You both worked very hard.
just happened. Paimon just feels absolutely exhausted now that she's finally relaxed. <sighs> Paimon's super sleepy. Are you sleepy too? Time to explain, mate. Goodbye. Uh, uh, hey, wait! What's wrong with these people? They won't even talk to us. They're here! Yeah. There you are! Oh, thank goodness! Quisto and Lavaroon, do you know what happened to you? We came here especially to inform you. Something seems to have gone terribly wrong just now. His grace is telling everyone to evacuate and get out. Lavarun was saying you two are new here and you don't have many friends, so you might slip through the cracks. Haven't you heard all the stories like that? An evacuation is successfully completed, yet you only find out once you do a head count that one or two people are missing. Wait, weren't you the one who brought that up? Why is it suddenly my idea? Hey, shut up! Okay, whatever. The point is, you should come with us. Yeah, he said to get as far away as possible, upwards and outwards. Oh no, it can't be that thing! Whoa, wait, what? What? Hey, where are you going? We have to go find the Duke! You two just go and get out! Go on without us! Hey, hey! Be careful! Attention! Please evacuate upwards and outwards, upwards and outwards! If you're already at the topmost layer, then try to move as far outwards as possible. They're here. Just like I said. Uh, what happened? Huh. You're just in time. Hmm? But be ready to run. Ah! <laughs> 
This won't hold it for long. Find Nuvilet. Tell him the defenses are about to collapse. Then what will happen to you? Until he arrives, we're the last line of defense. <gasps> the gate. How long do you think it'll hold? That depends on us. <laughs> Nuvalet? Why are you here? Traveler, I need you to head to the Opera House immediately. Farina will soon be meeting with the Knave there. You must protect Farina, and make sure she doesn't spend too much time alone with her. Will do. You have my sincerest gratitude. Paimon? Monsieur Nervalet has left instructions. Please follow me. Though I'm sure he's already explained, this should be a mostly cordial conversation unlikely to give rise to violence. But it would be most appreciated if you could protect Lady Farina to the best of your abilities. Oh, so you two are the honored guests Miss Farina mentioned. Of course, of course! How could they not attend a meeting such as this? I must always have two or more guests at my dessert table. Otherwise, the occasion would be too lonely and unbecoming of my station. It is my pleasure to make your acquaintance, Traveler. I have heard much of your accomplishments. I am the Knave. One of the eleven Fatui Harbingers. I've already prepared seats for you. Come, sit beside me. Perhaps you two are unaware of how Miss Farina and I do things. You see, we actually recently agreed to get together for tea when we had the time. See this? This is a limited type of confectionery that Miss Farina simply adores. There are only 16 slices sold every day. Here, why don't you and Paimon have a taste? Traveler, what do you think of this cake? That's good to hear. So what Child said was on the mark after all. You do share a taste in desserts with Farina and I. I wonder how he's doing nowadays. You must have heard, right? He's suddenly gone missing. I'm really worried about his safety, you know. Here's to hoping that he's an excellent swimmer. Uh, since we're talking about him, I feel like I should add something. His martial prowess really looked... certainly pretty impressive, yeah. Oh, 
So you are also familiar with his aptitude for fighting, Miss Farina. Oh, right. I almost forgot. Child was subdued by Udex Nuvillette right in front of you. Against ordinary people, my colleague would never be on the back foot. But alas, he just never imagined he'd run into such a person. Hmm. I must express my admiration for Monsieur Nuvillette. Hmm. Coming from you, that's not surprising at all. Uh, but I thought you would be happier to hear the news. Of course, but it's still a bit of a shame. You see, I would have been far happier had I received this news somewhat earlier. As you well know, a long time has passed since Child disappeared. Uh... uh well, in any case, there's no need to worry. We know for sure that Child is still alive! Oh. And just how do you know that? Because... Uh... Because we found evidence that proved he left the Fortress of Meripede! And where did he go after leaving the Fortress? Well... The Fortress of Meripede lies deep beneath the waves. Unless he pranced right out of the main gate, he must have had to swim for it. Do you have any proof that he surfaced safely? Ah, oh, that is good news at least. His sister Tonya sent a letter to Fontaine not too long ago. Since he was unfortunately unavailable, I picked it up on his behalf. Do you have any idea how he usually writes back to his family? Dear Tonya, your letter made me feel like we were still enjoying our time in Snezhnaya together. I'm currently admiring the scenery on the streets in front of the Opera House. Is it something like that? All letters tend to follow the same few formats anyway, right? As long as the contents are accurate, it doesn't matter so much how it's written or how it's worded. <sighs> Hold on. The water in the teacup is shaking. Hmm. I suppose this is also a sign of things to come, Miss Farina. Huh? Uh, I don't quite understand what you're trying to say. Have we entered into the next stage of the prophecy? <sighs> <laughs> My thanks to you both. I will take it from here. <laughs> sure you don't need a hand? Quite sure. Wow. So, what's your secret, huh? Uh, let me guess. Nah, who knows. Maybe it's just your sense of responsibility. <laughs> hmm. Sounds about right. Day may come when the prophecy is fulfilled and the waters burst forth, but it is not this day. This ancient power could easily obliterate an entire race. A tsunami of fury would unleash endless catastrophe. Forgive me for overruling it.
All right. Seems like the problem inside has been suppressed. Let me guess. We're safe for now. <laughs> Indeed. But only for now. <laughs> I win this bet. You owe me a present. <sighs> Very well. It was indeed just as you said. You made a bet? We made a bet on the size of your entourage. Cloran thought you wouldn't come down by yourself. I figured you would have at least brought a few people along for appearance's sake. It appears I underestimated just how confidential the mission was. Shouldn't you have gotten used to confidential missions by now? That's just how the courts operate. So what gift must the loser give? Tea? Hmm. He already has tons of tea in his office. I'm thinking about a set of legal codices. That wouldn't happen to be a dig at my lack of legal awareness, would it? Well, I'm sure His Grace doesn't consider the fortress to be outside the law. I was under the impression the residents of a place like this would be uninterested in the legal codices. <sighs> that was obviously a joke. Uh, anyway, you've still got some unfinished business to attend to in the overworld, correct? No need to stay here if you have a pressing matter. We all know you can't leave Palais Mermonia for long. Thank you. I hope everything went smoothly with the Fatui Harbinger. I must say, we've spent long enough playing house. Miss Farina, as the Hydro Archon, I am sure you understand the exact meaning of the phenomenon we just witnessed. Or should I say, that's what I originally thought. But looking at your expression, was I wrong? And you haven't a clue? What are you trying to say? At this point, I don't think there's any more need to speak as diplomatic representatives. Allow me to speak to you now as just a Fontanian. You know the prophecy by heart, and also that every part of it is being proven true. Yet, here you are, relaxing, drinking tea, and eating desserts as if it's all nothing more than a few stray bugs in your garden. Do you really think that's acceptable? The prophecies hanging above our necks like a guillotine. Every faction is looking for a way to either avert the disaster or save their own. Even the orphans of the House of the Hearth have devoted everything to saving their homeland. But you? It beggars belief just how nonchalant and carefree you have been. From the very beginning, you, the god Fosalor, you have utterly failed to take action. You're wrong. I've never ignored the prophecy, nor have I just been passing the time in self-indulgence. Retract your accusation and stop doubting the wisdom of the gods with such absurd conjectures! I am not alone in my doubts, you know. All the children of Fontaine may be harboring the exact same thoughts right now. Oh, great Hydro Archon. How are you going to save them? Save us. How are the people you've sworn to protect supposed to survive in a land that will soon disappear beneath the waves? I have my ways. And I've been working on them for all this time. Even if you look down upon me, you have no right to judge me. Fontaine will be saved. Even... Even if I still cannot see the true future right now... As long as I continue on as I am, I will be able to hold my head up high! Then I ask you, Miss Farina, just what have you been working on? Where can we see it and what is it doing to help? <sighs> My machinations are just like the prophecy itself. 
They will only reveal themselves at the fated time. It is just that beings like yourselves are unable to perceive them as of yet. Mm, I see. As a god, the proof of your labor always lies beyond prying mortal eyes. Allow me to be so bold as to ask another way. Would it be possible for you to tell us the parts of your plan that are not confidential? Such as, your emergency response plan for the impending disaster? Uh, an emergency response plan? Oh, that look in your eyes. Have you not even prepared one of those? The... the emergency response plan is also strictly confidential. Then allow me to jog your memory. Miss Farina, what is the purpose of your oratrice mechanique d'analyse, Cardinal? And what do you plan to do with the massive amounts of indemnitium that has accumulated over the years? The oratrice? It, it's just like it appears to be. Hmm. So you also have no idea. If I'm not mistaken, someone's using it to prepare for something. But unfortunately, it would seem that someone is not you, Miss Farina. I first caught wind of this when Linny tried to investigate the Oratrice in the Opera House. You see, even just getting close to the core contaminated him with an extremely large amount of indemnitium. But even if that had nothing to do with you, then what could you possibly be working on, oh great Hydro Archon? Oh, right. I almost forgot. Udex Nouvellette is not at the tea party with us today. Miss Farina, I suppose you must have ordered him away to take care of some troublesome business. Ah, uh, yeah, yes, that's exactly right. Please keep it a secret for me. Of course I will. Although, I must say, Miss Farina, you seem quite insecure without the Udax by your side. Oh, very well. Let's stop that conversation here. There are still a few slices of cake left, so please, help yourselves, everyone. Traveler? I heard that you were recently commissioned to handle a few matters on behalf of the Udex. Why don't you take an extra slice of cake? Those who work hard deserve gratitude and praise. You too, Paimon. Uh, thank you. Paimon will take you up on that offer. Oh, Paimon's super full. That cake was great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if it's on my tea table, it must be of the highest quality. Uh, yes, and we must thank the Nay for bringing these over as well. You're welcome. I'm sure the cake also felt greatly honored to be featured at Miss Farina's table. And I was merely catering to Miss Farina's tastes, seeking a chance to chat over tea. Mm, it is getting late. Why don't we call it a day? There are still a few matters that I need to take care of, so I must take my leave now. Very well. We'll end it here. Mind seeing me off, Traveler. We could use the opportunity to discuss Child before I must be on my way. Paimon's coming too! Tea party turned out to be even more difficult than I'd imagined. Uh, uh, <laughs> ahem. Why are you looking at me like that? Is something the matter? If there's nothing urgent, then I shall be retiring for now.
I'm glad that you were willing to come with me. Of course, child was just an excuse. I have no interest in your dealings with him. That's what Paimon thought! You lent your aid to the children of the House of the Hearth. As their father, I would like to express my gratitude. That was all. Formal topics should be discussed in formal settings, and informal topics in informal settings. I know you just returned from the Fortress of Meripede. Relax, I have no intention of trying to get anything out of you. Linny, Lynette, and Fremine are still there, and I trust their judgment and abilities. They've all been working very hard and have always done all they can to fight back against anyone who tried to stop them. Especially Linny. You mean Ridesley. He's a tricky one to deal with. Hmm. It's unfortunate that Linny's so eager to prove himself that he can't learn to rely on others. Including me. By the way, and you can just consider this a bit of idle gossip, but what's your impression of Farina? You are outside of our disputes, and the freest person in all of Fontaine, able to move around most easily. Allow me to share my perspective with you. And that's everything that happened during the trial. Master Child was declared guilty and immediately transported to the Fortress of Meropede. Didn't he say he was coming here on vacation? Does he not feel an ounce of shame for all the trouble he has caused? Uh, I... Forget it. He did give us an opportunity. I will be meeting someone shortly. Do you require help with any preparations? No need. I will take care of it myself. I need to meet with Farina, the Hydro Archon. She is at the heart of Fontaine. But what's fascinating about her is that she often seems more like a celebrity than a working Archon. Oh? Come over here, you little critter, you! You dare to run from me? Stop right this instant! My goal is just to discover the location of the Gnosis. But I didn't expect the chance to approach Farina to be handed to me on a silver platter. This is so easy, it's actually making me a bit suspicious. Anything left unguarded is usually just bait. But no one will blame someone for taking the bait. After all, from the moment it was attached to the hook, the bait is meant to be sacrificed. <laughs> It's just as I guessed in the second before I struck. The Hydronosis is not currently held by the Archon. In fact, this Archon doesn't seem like a god at all. And I sense that she's under some kind of curse. Who are you? And, and what are you trying to do? Please don't kill me! I'm begging you, please! The fear in her pupils is genuine. So perhaps she's not bait after all. Either way, targeting her has lost all meaning. Hmm. I left the scene with ease. Nobody came looking for me, and nobody could serve as a witness to my near assassination of Fosalor. I suspect even Farina dares not mention this incident to anyone. Not long after, my informants confirmed what I had guessed. After returning to her quarters, Farina quietly cried alone. She was so scared that she could not sleep that night, nor could she even bring herself to eat her cake. There's no doubt that there's something wrong with her. I began to entertain the possibility that she is not the true Hydro Archon. Perhaps Eudex Nuvillette is actually the genuine article. I have to find the Gnosis. If the Nuvillette hypothesis is correct, he is probably in possession of it. Alternatively, it might have been hidden in a place that's hard for ordinary people to access. Yes, Father. My dear children, please speak. News from the Fortress of Meripede. Master... Master Child has gone missing. On top of that, the contacts and guards we bribed at the Fortress have all gone quiet as well. Probably the handiwork of that Ridesley. I'm afraid so. This is a good opportunity. The value of a Harbinger is much higher than most would imagine. We now have an excuse to exert diplomatic pressure on the Fontaine authorities. 
Set up a meeting for me. I would like to meet the Hydro Archon and Udex Muvillette. Oh, and I have an additional mission for you three. Yes, yes Father. Father. Tartaglia's disappearance was not a part of my plan, but I can use it to make a breakthrough. With this as my excuse, I can ask for an official audience and continue my investigation of Farina and Udex Nuvillette. The initiative belongs to the House of the Hearth. My wish to investigate the Fortress of Meripede will be a front. Linny and his group will be responsible for the actual intelligence gathering. You should know the rest. Lenny's group is quite close to you, so they wouldn't have hidden anything from you. you. You attacked the Hydro Archon? It wouldn't mean anything, even if you shouted it from the rooftops. After all, even Farina herself is still pretending that nothing of that sort ever happened. Uh, all right then. I've now had two chances to enjoy tea with Farina. I have to say, the leadership of Fontaine is even more inscrutable than I had imagined. I once surmised that Udex Nuvillette must be the Hydro Archon. But now, that doesn't seem right to me either. I am a servant of Her Majesty the Tsaritsa. Over my years of service, I've learned how a real Archon conducts and carries themselves. Whether Udex Nuvillette or Farina, neither fits the bill. It's hard to imagine either of them as the Archon. Of course, that is all just how I feel. Gut feelings often do not require justification. It is, however, quite amusing to me that after all my years working in intelligence gathering, I've come to realize I am at a complete loss regarding the identity of the god of the land of my birth. Don't you think Fontaine is quite intriguing? A catastrophe looms, yet many secrets have yet to rise to the surface. <sighs> it looks like Fontanians will have no choice but to save themselves. Ultimately, though, one must survive in order to do anything else. Should the need arise, I would be happy to cooperate with you. You don't need to commit to anything right now, of course. I have a feeling that the situation will continue to evolve, and as your name is often connected with noble deeds, I'm sure we will work together someday. He certainly returned quickly. You must want to catch up with each other, so I'll leave you to him. Hmm. Nevelette, is it over? For now, yes. But this issue will prove quite thorny in the long term. I am concerned that sooner or later the prophesied events will occur. Thank you for protecting Farina. Mm. To put it simply, I used my power to force back the Primordial Sea and reseal the Sluice Gate. Hmm. So as expected, the Knave has turned up the pressure on Farina. She's trying to feel her out though I'm still unsure as to her motives. Permission granted. Whoa. It can't be that you're the real Hydro Archon, right? But that's just a speculation on our part, though. <laughs> you can't tell us? Then... Then that's okay. We can talk about something else. We won't try to force you. <laughs> you guys in Fontaine are super strange. If by the phrase, you guys, you are referring to Farina and I, then although I'm not sure just what you are trying to imply, I must clarify that I do not share her positions on a multitude of topics. I believe so. The fortress has a long and complex history. 
it has seen much grief and suffering. Hmm. And now, another catastrophe will soon be upon us. I mourn this turn of events. Huh? Why is it raining all of a sudden? You may be closer to the truth than you think. Oh? And what are you thinking? The... Dragon... of... Uh, what? Huh? Please do not be so surprised. <sighs> Farina? <laughs> ah, my apologies. Randomly, we didn't guess right, did we? You're not actually the Dragon Sovereign of Water, right? Well, if you don't want to confirm or deny... <sighs> you guessed correctly. I sincerely hope you'll be able to keep this a secret for me. Uh, right, of course. We'll definitely help you keep it a secret. There's still something Paimon wants to ask you, though. Please, go ahead. Well, if you are the Dragon Sovereign of Water, and you were able to force back the Primordial Sea from the fortress, then since Fontaine's prophecy is all about seawater, couldn't you just use your power to solve the crisis? None of the currently living Dragon Sovereigns in the world, myself included, possess our full Dragonhood. They say that when the first Usurper arrived on Tivat, they seized a part of the Dragon's power. Today, that stolen power is the basis of the Archon's authorities. There are seven Elemental Archons and seven matching Dragon Sovereigns. The Dragon Sovereign of Water who lived through that era perished a long time ago. As their successor, I know far less of that part of our ancient history. In any case, I believe I will not be able to do much unless the Archon disappears and returns their Elemental Authority to me. Given the status quo, however, I would recommend finding another way to deal with the prophecy. Oh, so even you can't solve it. I still have some urgent matters to attend to at my office. If you have any more questions regarding ancient history, you are welcome to discuss them with me at a later time. Ah, please go right ahead. There's a place that Paimon wants to go to. Traveler, why don't we pay another visit to the Fortress of Meripede? Paimon is a little worried. We'll see you another time. Take care. This weather? Book learning alone is not enough to cultivate intelligence. All those scholars in the academia are prime examples. I want to go on a vacation with Galvana.
Jurier? Miss Sijuin told me you still haven't eaten. Yeah, I was working on something, so I forgot. Uh, that's no excuse for Huh? What's you two? Jurier, Lurvine, we're back! Hello there. It's been quite the mess here recently. How have you been? And you? Are you still taking the secret passageway from the infirmary to work on the ship? Yep. That is still top secret, though, so don't say a word to anyone. It can be a bit annoying when there are lots of people in the infirmary, but I still prefer taking that route over the one from the Duke's office. I mean, the infirmary does make it easier for you to slack off. Oh, yeah? Then why are you also here so much? You two really are just using your jobs as a cover for your relationship, aren't you? Not at all! You... you guys are back? Crystal! Lover You guys didn't get caught and thrown back down here, right? Huh? No, not at all! Ah, and here I thought you'd managed to escape from jail during all the commotion. I'd held you up as legendary jailbreakers, but now you're telling me... You just... never left? Uh, <laughs> we're sorry, but we just... had some business to take care of. All right, all right, there's no need to get caught up in the details. We're just relieved to see you. He was super worried about you, you know. <laughs> hey, it wasn't just me. Weren't you super worried as well? Uh, something like that, yeah. I was also transferred to work in the kitchen a few days ago. I can still hear Quisto mumbling to the carrots. Are those two all right? Do you think they made it out alive? Whenever he'd say that, I'd tell him I'm sure they're fine. Wherever they are, they're kicking back with drinks in hand, enjoying the lovely scenery. Hey, there's nothing wrong with worrying about your prison pals, is there? I mean, considering how they always love listening to all my gossip. These two, they sure are a lot warmer and friendlier than when Paimon first met them. Oh, well, if you say so. I'll be watching you to make sure you finish every last bite. for the time being. Of course, we must also thank you for the help you provided. How did Nervalet know that he was needed here? 
Omishur Nervulet has strong resonance with the hydro element. When the water level rises, he can feel the waves produced. I ran into the bombshell bros while bandaging the injuries of the wounded. They were mumbling the whole time about how you just ran down without a word. I'm so relieved to see that you're both alright. If you're not too pressed for time, please stay with us a few more days. Just let me know if you get a craving for any particular dish, so I can have Mr. Wolsey get your meals prepared. Oh, and please feel free to visit the infirmary for a break at any time. I'd like to take the opportunity to spend some more time observing your facial muscles as well. Your happy smiles are quite contagious, you know. They're so memorable, and I've missed them immensely while you were gone. Now guess, what suit will this next cart be? Uh... A bear teeth cat? Well, well, look who it is. Traveler, Paimon! <sighs> Hello, everyone. Looks like you're recovering nicely, Fremine. Mm-hmm. Thanks to everyone's support. Oh, right. I... I managed to work up the courage to thank Miss Clorand in person. How did she react? Uh, she told me that it was nothing. It was as if saving a life wasn't a big deal to her at all. She also told me not to worry about it. She didn't want to stress you out, that's all. She's right, and it's best not to dwell on it. Yeah. Okay, but check this out. We went back to the Opera House and we met the Knave. You met Father? Did she say anything to you? She said a few things that were... Her attitude towards you is even better than what we'd imagined. <laughs> That's fantastic. You should believe her. She has her own way of doing things, and she'll do everything in her power to help those she considers close, which now might also include you. Mm-hmm. Father is very capable, and also trustworthy. Oh, Paimon just remembered that she thought Lenny was a bit too proud as well. She said that you should learn how to rely on others sometimes. Uh, got it. Huh, that does sound like something that father would say. Hey! Are you going to stay here for the next few days? Looks like it, yeah! Excellent. I will host a tea party. For real? Then Paima wants another serving of cake! Another implies that you were already served some delicious cake while you were up there. Hmm, how lovely. Well... 
Next time, you're going to have tea and snacks with us. Do my eyes deceive me, or did I just see two inmates come back after making it to the surface? Some strange winds blowing of late. We wanted to see how the fortress is doing. Is everything still alright? We're fine, for the most part. Nervalet came down and took care of the worst of it. If that's the case, why don't you just ask him to stay here? Oh, yeah, what a brilliant plan. Let's go convince the Udex himself to exchange the Courts of Fontaine for a puddle of water in the middle of nowhere. He came here in a hurry and left without even stopping for a cup of tea. He did remember to take Miss Sijuin's gift with him, though. He sure sounds super busy. Miss Cloran has left as well. She also took her gift from Miss Sijuin. Were the gifts milkshakes? Nervalette got the milkshake. Cloran received lipstick instead. Uh, those aren't even remotely alike. Well, it's Nervalette's own fault for making Sijuin worried about his health by working so much. But besides that, our head nurse is still pretty fond of picking out beauty products for the ladies. Oh, and I have some gifts here for you as well. Are these from Sijuin too? Nope, they're from yours truly. You've already wrapped up your work at the fortress, so you can return to the surface at any time. You haven't yet served your full prison term, however, so you may continue to use your cell until your term is up. For real? Then we could stay here for a really long time? You may access the cafeteria for free. Hooray! Just remember to come complete your paperwork once it's time for your release.
Is it time for a magic show? Again. We're no longer prisoners, though, so it really doesn't feel the same. Sure feels that way. But the truth is, we never did anything bad to begin with, so I'm not sure why we put so much pressure on ourselves. Huh? How did you know? Hey, that's not true! <sighs> All right. Okay, Paimon just wanted to say that we really are an amazing duo after all. It's like, we've now gone to so many places together and become friends with so many people. We've never stopped traveling or stopped meeting new friends. There are so many bad things in the world, and we're just two people, but... We've still been solving problems no matter where we go. You're counting Paimon today? Aren't you the only adventurer here? Then let's ask Catherine to give Paimon an adventurer handbook as well! Paimon will also be an adventurer from today forward! Ah, uh, just our thoughts making Paimon giddy! Oh, um, Paimon's gonna crash, so you sleep soon too. The last time we fell asleep here, we woke up to a whole mess outside our cell. The primordial seawater nearly rose up! That was so scary. We should be safe now, right? Traveler! Is ready? Now it's time for a short rest.
since we last saw Nevelet. Paimon wonders what he's been up to. Paimon has... Entering standby mode. I hope nobody disturbs me. Welcome to Palais Mermonia. He is ready. Now it's time for a short rest. Seems Linny is saying some strange things again. It's really worrying. Wait, did, uh, did I hear that right? Monsieur Nervalet, are you sure you'd like to take over the case yourself? That's right. No, but why? Technically speaking, cases like this are better left to the guards. Nivellet! Sadine! Hey there! What are you two talking about? Ugh, Traveler and Paimon, please help me talk our Chief Justice out of this. He wants to investigate a case on his own. Now, this is completely unprecedented. How can we have the Udex acting like a private detective? Hmm? Thank you for your concern, but I currently have no such plans. Oh, apologies. I took your question in earnest, but it now occurs to me that it was most likely in jest. So, what is it exactly? It sure sounds serious if it's something you've got to investigate personally. 
a Melusine named Kiara received a threat letter. And then? That is all the information I have acquired at this stage. Huh? Uh, I have no idea why you're so hung up over this. I've checked the schedule in advance and it seems like there aren't any trials today. So, if you insist, I have no objections. Thank you for understanding. I will leave a note explaining my absence on my desk. I would appreciate it if you could take it to Lady Farina. She may have no interest in official affairs, but standard procedure dictates that I'm still responsible for reporting to her. Yes, yes, understood. I'll come back later and deliver the note to her. Judging from Sadine's reaction, it must be pretty rare for you to investigate stuff personally. What's so special about this case? I cannot tell you just yet, but it reminded me of certain past events. There could be complicated conflicts of interest behind all this, so I must eliminate all risks in advance. It is not my intention to keep you in the dark, but I need some time to revisit those memories and collect my thoughts. Long story short, a little more than 400 years ago I became the Udex of Fontaine and initiated a series of institutional reforms. There were few people I could trust, but I had two subordinates who were exceptionally trustworthy and capable. Carol, a Melusine, and Vautrin, leader of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. They must have been amazing people to receive such high praise from you! Indeed. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to protect them. The reforms damaged the interests of some, and the more conservative faction took advantage of Carol's identity to instigate political unrest. Ultimately, they wanted me to yield more of my power. The incident resulted in Carol taking her own life, and Vautrin being exiled. From then on, I've been especially careful when dealing with cases related to Melusines. All Melusines used to live a secluded life away from human society. I granted their wishes when some of them, including Carol, asked me to bring them to the court of Fontaine. Many common folk believe that I share a special bond with the Melusines and whatever they do can be traced back to me. Some of them, especially those who hold a grudge against me, exploit that belief and stir up conflict over Melusines in an attempt to lay the blame on me. I have nothing against the opinions of others, but the moment a whirlpool of conspiracy forms, it inevitably affects the innocent. It has already happened once, and I want to make sure it does not happen again. Um, even so, why do you have to be the one investigating? There's the guards, the Mari Chaussee Phantom, and the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol! Aren't they more than enough to figure out what's going on? Based on prior experience, there is a high chance that those who hold hostility towards me do not belong to the same department. The political system of Fontaine is relatively complex and involves the interests of multiple different factions. However, since I am technically an outsider in Fontaine, a lot of trouble could be avoided if I personally took on the case. Outsider? But aren't you the Chief Justice of Fontaine? Why would you be an outsider? I understand where you are coming from, but there is not necessarily a connection between my responsibilities 
and how I perceive myself. You know very well about my true identity, and have even met others of my kind in other nations. Even though I was born with a human form, there is a fundamental difference between dragons and humans. Taking on the role of Chief Justice does not make me a part of this community. In fact, the status I was granted has prevented me from forming deeper bonds with others. I have lived in Fontaine for a long time, but I do not belong here. That is why I call myself an outsider. A fish out of water. All those organizations anyway so how about we come with you on your investigation let's team up and round up all the bad guys lurking in the dark hmm that does not sound like a bad idea i rarely investigate cases on my own but with professionals like you around i'm sure it will go a lot smoother oh <laughs> Paimon's starting to get a little embarrassed just leave it to us i will write my note of absence right away let us depart together once I'm done. Let us go. We should visit Kiara first and try to gain a better understanding of the situation. Um, so Nevelet feels like he doesn't truly belong here in Fontaine, but is that really true? like he has a kind of skewed perspective on a lot of things. Anyway, let's catch up with him first. <laughs> 